Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Tech Guy is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Radio Networks on Sunday, March 10th, 2013. This is episode 960. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by ShareFile. Enhance your workflow. Send files of almost any size easily and securely with ShareFile from Citrix. Try ShareFile today for a 30-day free trial. Visit ShareFile.com, click the radio microphone, and enter Tech Guy. Hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, uh, the tech guy, mm, yeah. to talk about technology, you know, computers and the internet and cell phones, home theater, and all that jazz. Phone number is 8888-ASK-LEO. If you want to call and ask a question, make a suggestion, 888-827-5536. That's toll free from anywhere in the U.S. of A. It won't cost you a penny. Outside the U.S., and we have many uh, listeners all around the world, but outside the U.S., you can uh, you can just use Skype or something and call us. Uh, coming up a little later on, Chris Marquardt, the photo guy, will talk about photography. That's another topic of discussion. <sighs> this is the uh, the week of uh, the big South by Southwest conference in Austin. South by Southwest started as a music festival. They added a film festival, and the and the week in between, they call South by Southwest Interactive. And over the last, oh, say, 10 years, it's become a very big party for the tech crowd. And uh, I'm not there. <laughs> I have done the show from there a couple of times. Uh, you might remember we did we, we did the show from Austin. And um, it's, a, it's a wonderful party. In the past, South by Southwest has been a, a great place to debut apps. That's where Twitter uh, became big in 2007, March 2000. Seven. It's where Foursquare became big in March 2008. And then every app developer in the world realized, wow, <laughs> this could be a good place to show off your app. And now so many apps debut at South by Southwest that you, it, it's just uh, so noisy that nobody can make any, any uh, hey. It's hard to become uh, big anymore. Still a, a great party. And so I know I have many friends down there. They're having a great time. And there's a thing in the, uh, I don't, is this uh, in the real world or just the tech industry? FOMO, F-O-M-O, -O, the fear of missing out. I know it's a real feeling in, in the whole world, but, but, but of course the tech industry has to make an acronym around it. The fear of missing out, and it's what a lot of people feel uh, this weekend if they're not in Austin. Oh, there's something going, there's a big party going on and I'm not there. Don't worry, don't worry, you're not missing out. Yeah. In fact, I'm looking for uh, big news stories out of Austin, and it's, it's not really. You know, there's a lot of party pictures. If you're an Insta, if you follow people on Instagram, there's a lot of parties, but not really any uh, any big news out of there. Maybe today, because the guy in charge of Google Search is uh, doing a a talk today, and I'm sure people will be asking him all kinds of questions because, well, it's it's a great mystery, isn't it? And if you could just unravel that mystery, what makes what makes you successful on Google, uh, or what doesn't, it it would help all of us, you know. Uh, but uh, we'll, I doubt he'll say anything too significant. But we'll we'll, we'll be we'll watch with interest. Google Glass will probably um, be a, a fairly predominant there. That's the new uh, eyeglass frame. That Google's uh, pushing. They say sometime this year they'll release it. It will be something around, oh, oh say, between $1,000 and $1,500. What? what? <laughs> $1,500. And you'll need an Android phone to tie it to. Oh, sigh. Uh, but I think that you will see people uh, wandering around with glasses on uh, at South by Southwest. That might be the that might be the real, the, the really interesting reason to go. Uh, just to see, you know, who's wearing it and why. What, what outsiders are getting to uh, to do it. Uh, I said I'd talk a little bit. Actually, I guess Chris is not here. Chris is not going to be here. All right. The chat room's telling me Chris is, uh, Chris is uh, AWOL today. 
but uh, I could talk a little bit about uh, about uh, tech uh, cameras because I'm, I'm I'm kind of a fanboy, and I said yesterday I would talk about this uh, new camera. I was looking for uh, a serious camera, a camera that has interchangeable lenses. I think that's pretty important, but that doesn't weigh a ton. Doesn't isn't a pain to carry around. Isn't a doesn't mark you as a a pro photographer because that gets you attention that maybe you don't want. And be a, a, a mark for theft, because that's another kind of attention one does not want. Now, I, I carry around a big big old Canon 5D Mark II, which is a big, big, pro-looking camera that says, steal me, everywhere I go. I remember walking around last year, or I guess it was two years ago now, in Buenos Aires with it, uh, late at night, and a guy taps me on the shoulder, just a friendly Argentinian, and says, oh, don't. What are you, nuts? <laughs> Don't be walking around with that camera hanging out, uh, or you're going <laughs> to, you, you will be dead in an alley soon. And that kind of scared me. So I looked around, and, uh, and I've been trying different small, compact cameras. I didn't want to go with a point and shoot. A lot of pros do. They have a point and shoot to, in addition to their big camera. Because you want something you can just pull out of your pocket and take a picture. And of course, I've got the camera phone. And most of the phones now have such credible cameras that that's, probably good enough. My last two trips, uh, I took just the camera phone with me because I didn't want to take the big camera. And um, most recently to the Super Bowl in New Orleans. And I got some nice pictures, but I really regretted not having a good camera. I said, I've got to get a good camera. And I talked to Chris Marquardt, our photo guy. And he said, you know, at my last workshop, a lot of people had this new Olympus OMD. Olympus, you know, uh, has been around for a long time as a film company, the camera company. In fact, the OM-1 was a tiny, not super tiny, but a small 35-millimeter uh, SLR that everybody loved. I remember in college many moons ago, uh, that was the camera you wanted. Nice and tiny. And, uh, and they didn't make the transition very well to, uh, to digital. They said, we're going to go all digital. And nobody said, everybody said, yeah, never mind. And, and Nikon and Canon really owned the digital high end, the pro marketplace for a long time. But uh, finally, Olympus found a little niche, which I think is an interesting niche. They decided to make cameras that were nostalgic, that reminded you of these old OM1s. And, and to use a technology called Micro Four Thirds. Now, this is interesting. And I think uh, some of my favorite photographers, like Trey Ratcliffe, who's a wonderful pro photographer have started to say you know this may be the future of, of photography maybe it's not these big slrs the full frame 35 millimeter sensors but smaller micro four third sensors they're about half the size but they're more because of that they're more compact and the designs are mirrorless and that's one of the things that makes these cameras so big you have a prism and a mirror that's so you can look through the lens the slr means you're looking through the lens as you're shooting and uh that, that's that's a lot of mechanism. When you press the button, you hear that big chunk as the mirror moves out of the way so that they, you could take the shot. And It's a big deal. It's a, it's mechanical and elaborate. And uh, while I like that chunk, it does add considerably to the size and weight. So Olympus is going with this mirrorless, as are some other companies. Panasonic's uh, doing Micro Four Thirds cameras. Uh, Fuji, Fujifilm is, uh, Fujitsu. A number of companies... And that's one of the other things I like about this. You know, normally when you buy a Nikon camera, you got to use Nikon lenses or Nikon compatible lenses. You buy a Canon, you have you're stuck with Canon. You can't use Nikon lenses without an adapter, and that's not so good. Micro Four Thirds is a industry wide standard, so any Micro Four Thirds lens will work with any Micro Four Thirds camera. Oh, that's interesting. It means there are manufacturers, a variety of manufacturers, making lenses. In fact, increasingly, this looks like the place to be. So I've I've been playing with this Olympus OMD, not cheap. I got to tell you. Uh, it's it's SLR expensive. We're talking eight ninety nine, I think, for the body, and then you have to buy a lens, and that could range anywhere from a hundred, two hundred, three hundred to eight hundred dollars. So you're talking less than a you know high end uh, digital SLR, but more than most people want to pay for a camera. But people often ask me, I want to get more serious about my photography. I want to take the next step, and I think I'm increasingly in, of the opinion this is it. The, I'll talk more about it as I take. I'll post some pictures eventually uh, as I take some shots. I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with the clarity, the color, the uh, flexibility and power of the camera, and it's so light and easy. You can carry it around, and you don't look like a big old, you know, pro photo dork. You just, look, you frankly, you look like a kind of a your grandpa. I do anyway, carrying around his his old little film camera, a brownie or something. I mean, it look it's kind of old fashioned looking. 
not intimidating. That's become a big problem for photographers these days. You know, you take a whip out a big old camera on a plane or anywhere, and they're going to throw you off. The Olympus OMD. I'll talk more about that another another time. But let's get to the phones. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I am very excited about this. <clears throat> very excited. And the, uh, and the OMD sub does some really oddball things. So this is very strange, John, because I still hear the buzz on this, and I can't imagine... I wonder, I wonder if it's... Let me try it on this phone and see. I wonder if it's an impedance. Because we don't have the problem out there. You know, when I use the uh, line out... Out there. Now, should you hear it just when you plug it in? Yeah, this sounds fine on my iPhone. The other thing I noticed is, as the video was changing, the buzz was changing, it was like a bit... Well, maybe it's a problem with the iPad. So, at some point... Oh, it's a huge buzz. Yeah, and move, move the screen. Yeah. So, maybe we'll take it out to the living room and see if it backs up. Oh. Oh. That's what it is. It's the power. It's never powered in up there. Yeah, that's why. Interesting. It's when the uh, when the power is plugged in. That Isn't that odd? That was a cool test. Yeah, I'm glad we narrowed it down. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Oh, there huh. you go. Cloud. <laughs> Isn't that odd? Well, well that's, that makes sense though. When you're powering it, it would be more uh, noisy. They. Well, they don't care. Audio is not a high priority for uh, for the app. For see, when you hit people, they say things. Och, och, yeah. Oh, it's great, great. Here's Duffman. Duffman is here to refill your beard. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's go have him subtly. Yeah, there's the there's Otto, the bus driver. Whoa, whoa. Ooh, this is why it's so addictive. Because they're characters you care about deeply. Like Milhouse, who says nothing. Milhouse is the... There are a few characters that don't have any voices. <laughs> I, they didn't want to pay the uh, the voice artists extra. <laughs> anyway, the uh, OMD has some very nice software features. For instance, I didn't bring it with me today. It has a um, tiltable... Uh, by the way, very nice OLED... LCD, so you can tilt it up and shoot at your waist like a role, or hold it over your head and tilt it down. But the nice thing about the can the tiltable uh, uh, screen is it's touch, so you can slide through pictures just like your phone. You feel like the, oh, this is natural. But the but my favorite thing so far in the touch is there is a, a, a mode where you could touch and, and uh, touch a point on the. So you're looking at the framing the picture. You touch the point you want to focus on. The camera focuses on it, and as soon as it's in focus, it takes the picture. So that's your shutter button and your focus. Tap where you want it, and it'll go, okay, focus on that, and take the picture. And that is really cool. Really cool. It has also a, uh, which I haven't figured out how to use, but uh, Chris told me. It has a time exposure thing where it shows as the time exposure is going on, the you know, the bulb exposure, how, what the picture is going to look like. And when you get just right, you stop it. Isn't that cool? So if you're taking pictures of stars, you go, you wait. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Next week. Brilliant. Tuesday and Wednesday, right at sunset, Naked Eye Comet. Naked Eye Comet? I'm taking pictures of the Naked Eye Comet. You have to go work there. Yeah. So it won't be around here. <laughs> the negative of it is a smaller sensor. It's a micro four-third sensor. But the lenses, I'm very pleased with. They're cheaper. I haven't seen anything with a long focal length. You only just 300. Because it's double, remember. Yeah. So I have one, I have a zoom that is uh, 40 or 50 to uh, 150, and that's the equivalent of 100 to 300 because it's 2x. 300 is plenty. <laughs> you don't want to go more than that. And it has um, mechanical image stabilization. Very nice image stabilization. There's a lot of nice things about it. All right, I don't see names. Can you reset the names on that thing? I see the... If I don't launch this at the same time or before you do it. Leo, let's just start with uh, Roseanne Line 1 in Los Angeles. Oh, I do oh, see, I the, do see the name there. in the comments. Hey. Oh, perfect. Who's well, doing, the, doing the... Who's Jason's doing the... Jason's doing phones. Yeah. We'll switch it up. That's fine. 
Leo Laporte, the oh, tech guy. A week from St. Patrick's Day, but I'm going to wear a green hat just in, in case. <laughs> when I was in New Orleans, I went to Meyer the Hatters. And I, uh, I actually went in and I got, because I saw in the window, I saw this green hat. That, uh, it's a green, like, it's not a fedora. What do you call these kinds of hats? It's like a fedora. Uh, you know, their hats, they have names. They all have names. I don't know. This one is uh, water repellent, packable. I guess water repellent means beer repellent, too, right? Green beer will bounce right off. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number. Roseanne, our first call from Los Angeles. Hi, Roseanne. Hello, Leo. Nice to talk to you. Okay. I don't watch television. I don't have cable. What kind of American are you, Roseanne? I, I know. I'm just the worst. <laughs> I'm a senior citizen. <laughs> that means your, your mind has not turned to mush. Right. Exactly. Good for you. And I have a really old TV someone gave me, but I can't, and I have a, still have a VHS and I have a DVD player, and somehow this TV doesn't have any video. So I'd like to be able to replace it if possible, with some sort of a device or monitor so that I can watch DVDs. And I have some old VHSs on that, on that device. Does it have to be a TV? Because now I watch DVDs on my iBook G4. Yeah, a, a computer is a really good choice for DVD I watching. I know, but that has to be, but I, um, that has to be replaced because it's really old and the new iMacs desktops don't have a sleeve. I know. Isn't that funny? They were eliminated optical discs. Makes me crazy. So well, you could still buy some Macs that have optical discs. But um, so you want uh, the, the, the DVD is not so hard. It's the VHS that's a little trickier. You, you really want to watch those VHSs, yeah? I guess I don't have to, but I thought perhaps there would be some sort of a device or... Um, I'll tell you where the... Can I just tell you where the future is? Because anything that you're doing... Uh, you know, certainly with a VHS, but even with DVD, DVD is the VHS of today. <laughs> I mean, it's on its way out, as you could tell. Um, where where the movie industry wants to go because of piracy, and frankly, for convenience, I think this is also true, is streaming. Do you have high-speed internet? I believe so. I have Uverse from at and Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't think it's any higher than the other one, but that's because... Well, you're already streaming if you have Uverse, because uh, if you watch TV on Uverse, I know you don't watch TV, but if you did... Uh, that would be, in effect, streaming over their internet connection. Right. That's but how they do it. Like for Hulu, because I watch Hulu occasionally. Hulu's a great choice. So, t <laughs> you do watch TV, but you just don't watch it on, over the air. You watch it on the internet. Right. Yeah. Rarely, though. Hulu wants us to subscribe. I'm trying to keep my expenses Yeah, low. yeah, no, I understand. But you're what we call a cord cutter, which is the hippest, modernist thing of all, which is no longer to have a cable company. But to get everything, if you wanted to watch, everything over the Internet. So there are a couple of things that you could do that I would recommend. Um, you, you, you did get a new TV, you said? No, I did not. You no, not? This is an old one that someone gave me. And okay. I like to go to the library and, and, and take out DVD. Okay, so you really do need a DVD player. I, I do need a DVD. I well, that's not an expense, uh, expensive thing. You could even go to the drugstore and get a $30 DVD player. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, they're not expensive. And uh, and you're going to want to make sure you get one that has a connection suitable for your TV, which I would guess is not a high-def TV. No, no. No, the thing is I already have a DVD player, but I can't – it doesn't hook up to this old TV. In other words, right. They, yeah, because there seems to be no video connection. Right. So and more the more modern DVD players want something called HDMI, which is a – Kind of a funny-looking slot with a little U underneath it. It's not very big. That that goes into the TV. But an older TV won't have that kind of connection. That's a digital connection. And only digital, you know, high-def TVs will have it. You probably will want... There's two choices for analog. The best choice is something called component. And you can look on the back of the TV. And if you have uh, component connectors, um, there'll be three connectors. I think green, yellow, and... Is it... Blue I can't, or red? I the green. Yeah, I, I did do something. I bought some of those. It's not those, um, what do you call those old cables? Well, there's there's RCA jacks, probably what yeah, you're thinking that's of. That's what I yeah. use. But it doesn't so, need well, if, so, what we're trying to figure out is what kind of connectors you, you have. Exactly. You need okay. to match them up. So, you, if you have component, that's the best quality. It'll be green, blue, and red. Okay. And they'll be over the green, there'll be a Y. Right. Uh, the blue will have a P. Right. B, and then the red will have a PR. That means it's component. So if you have that on your DVD player, which you probably do, 
then you could hook it up that way. And you just get a, you just go to the Radio Shack or drugstore and say, I need a component. It'll be three RCA cables, either bound together or separately. The other way that uh, you can go is a little lower quality, but everybody supports this. Maybe newer TVs might not, but older TVs certainly do. And your and your VCR may or, or your DVD may or may not. Your VCR certainly does. Is called composite. That's the lowest quality. It's yellow, red, and white. Right. I have that already. Yeah, yellow is video. Red and white's the left and right uh, audio. But it's not working. The TV is not. The DVD well, you have player goes on, but the TV doesn't. And you have the connector into the TV for yellow, red, and white. Okay, so you just have to go into the TV menu or input. What you want to do is select input and select the composite input. I think this TV might really be that old that it doesn't. Well, no, if it has the connectors, it, it supports it. Okay. So you just have to go into the in. There's an input button on the side, probably or somewhere, and choose the composite. You know, it's funny. It may have different names for it, um, but you have to get the right input. It's you know on that TV. I bet it's channel three. I've tried it, but I've tried it, but it's, this is huge. I thought I could get something that's smaller to sit on. T the for a TV or for the TV? Oh, yeah, for for the. For, I guess what's I what's huge? Which thing is huge? The TV is. Huge. Yes, of course it's huge because it's a glass tube, and <laughs> and so you can go again to the drugstore and get a cheap HD TV, which would solve your, many of your problems. It would, I see. Yeah, and now they're and they're cheap. What do we we get something called? John has found something called the TCL, which he, it's like. It, $100, $200 for a smaller one and for a big one, $400 are cheap. Right. And I don't have to necessarily hook it up to cable. No, you can. No, in fact, that's now your monitor that you can hook up to a DVD player. Now, now you can use the HDMI cable, which will give you a much better picture. Uh, your VCR, you're going to That's a. Little, you're gonna have to kind of give up on the VCR. I might have to give up on that. That's fine. Yeah. But if, if, I, if I have to buy the desktop computer without the sleeve. Don't get the. Comp don't worry about the computer. Get the get a cheap, really seriously get a cheap monitor. You can, at the drugstore you can go, or you can go to your big box store. And and you because your screen now is probably twenty seven or thirty two inches, that's tiny for an HD TV. You can get that size for a hundred bucks. Nobody wants it. And you can get a bigger a forty two, which is kind of what I would recommend, probably for a few hundred bucks. How much are the forty two TCLs, John? Four hundred. And you can go lower. Right. And they're fine. Right. 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 So I could, That's what I would do. I know you don't want to spend any additional money, but you do want to watch movies. That's exactly. And, it's, it's and then eventually what you want to look at is a Roku box. I've that, heard of this from you, yeah. Yeah, and I really, the, the new Roku just came out. Actually, this is a very, uh, uh, maybe the most revolutionary thing of all. Of course, you can get Netflix, seven ninety nine a month for unlimited streaming. Right. You can watch Hulu. Or Hulu Plus, which gives... I, yeah, you're right. I, you know, you don't need to pay for Hulu Plus if you're not into TV that much. I want to talk about this Roku, this new Roku, though, because they're doing something interesting with Time Warner Cable that may be the end. <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <laughs> I ordered it. I'm very excited. Older Roku. She wants to get rid of the TV. She said it's too big. I don't want it. Where do I see the help desk page? I don't think, do we have a help desk? I don't think this is a, we don't have a help desk. You can go to our website, techguylabs.com, Peter. She said, I don't watch TV, but how can I watch TV? <laughs> Aereo's coming, I know, I know. Well, I think what she means when, he's, when she says, I don't watch TV, is I don't watch the local, I don't watch channel four, channel five, channel seven, channel two, you know, the locals. She likes to watch, she watches something on, and I say that all the time. I don't watch local television. I want to watch uh, movies. Like last night when I watched the last episode of Downton Abbey and I cried my eyes. No, I didn't cry my eyes. I was actually more shocked. Shocked. Oh, there's a, there's a uh, help desk. Uh, I didn't know that. Help desk chat channel, huh? She could use an. I don't. She, she wasn't clear about what she wanted. No, the Olympus is not noisy. The the image quality is quite good. Of course, it's not as good as a full frame, but what you it's not noisy. What you notice uh, with because it's uh, sixteen megapixels, I think something like that, but or thirteen. But what you what which is plenty. It's got plenty plenty of resolution. What you 
do miss with a smaller sensor is you don't get quite the depth of field. You don't get that amazing full frame depth of field where the, the you know, you're taking a portrait and the person's in focus and everything behind them is just clouds. I should really have uploaded some pictures because I've been just doing test shots and stuff and they're just gorgeous. Yeah, do not argue with the mods. Yeah, the harp of death. But the good news is once they fix it, you'll get donuts. Seriously. They reward you. I did not get the harp of death for some reason. Have you done all your upgrades? Make sure you... Uh, what I would do is reboot the machine and upgrade or even uninstall and reinstall because remember, your, uh, your, your, your Springfield is tied to your EA account. So you can use a different machine and go to the same. You don't lose your Springfield when you do that. I did not, for some reason, get the Harp of Death. I have now bought everything except for those premium, they're not premium, but they're very expensive, million, two million, and three million dollar buildings. The popsicle stick skyscraper and the escalator to nowhere and the 50 foot <laughs> magnifying glass. But I have everything else now. So I'm, I'm really just grinding gold because I just want to get those. And if, and I know that they'll add more stuff over time. Oh, you lost your Springfield? Oh, I would quit. I would quit. In fact, I'm really ready to quit now at this point because there's no, um, there's no, there's nowhere to go anymore. You know, I've built everything. Built, Mr. you know, the Wiggums, the Wiggums house. Uh, El, the last thing was El Chemistry, the fancy restaurant. Here's the Wiggum's house right here. So there's nothing more to, you know, I built the, uh, they added for St. Patrick's Day, they added a Irish bar, built that. There's really not much more to do until they, uh, you know, add some levels or something. So, it's, you know, maybe it'll get boring. I hope, I pray. I pray. Yeah, the Hulu, the, uh, are you talking Nightstar, the, um, an Android stick or the Roku stick? Yeah, the Simpsons might have Harlem Shake, but I have so much invested both time and money in this Springfield, I cannot abandon it. They're clever that way, aren't they? The evil EA. I bought SimCity, I haven't had a chance to play it. Oh, stop it, you're going to make me cry. Hey, Leo, uh, yeah. you can hold the tears back. Stamps.com, billboard. <laughs> oh, wow, I never heard the singing version. <laughs> oh, stop it! I've never, I've never heard the, the one with music, with the singing in it. All right. Next time, Game of Thrones, okay? We want to move forward, not look backwards. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Very excited. We're talking about, this is a good subject. I like this subject. How to save money by eliminating uh, your cable, uh, watching everything online. Um, and, the, the, you know, yet the, the times have, are getting there, but we are not quite there yet because the cable companies are terrified of this whole thing and the local channels even more so. And it's it's scary for them. But but there are a lot of people, I think there are a lot of people out there like Roseanne who just uh, are don't want to pay for an expensive cable bill. They want to watch, I think a lot of us just want to watch movies, maybe some HBO shows, maybe Downton Abbey, you know, on PBS, that kind of thing. Most of that stuff you can get uh, on demand uh, if you have the right box. Now, uh, Apple TV, the, the problem is these boxes all do different things. So there's Apple TV, which is the only box that gives you access to the iTunes store. And a lot of this stuff is rented or, or, or you could purchase it on the iTunes store. You don't save copies of this stuff. Uh, you stream it. It comes down via the Internet. So you have to have high-speed Internet. Bandwidth caps will be a problem if you have low bandwidth caps because these things are large files um, but that works pretty well if you have good internet and uh, and uh, and not a huge bandwidth cap I I watch streaming content almost exclusively at home uh, rarely watch anything live anymore except maybe you know sports events things with an outcome where you don't want to you know watch after the fact because everybody will have told you who won uh, even the Academy Awards, I really I watched after the fact, which was nice because I could zip through all the bad stuff. 
<laughs> which meant it took me about three minutes to watch. So that was, that was the best savings. Uh, but so how do you do it is the question. So it starts with a high-speed Internet. Now, you need some way to connect your TV to the Internet. This is, this is the point that VCR, that the DVD is as dead as the VCR, in my opinion. Maybe you want to keep a Blu-ray DVD, and, and only because that's the highest quality. And if you really care about quality, and there's movies you care an awful lot about that you might want to buy. For instance, I just bought for $27 The Hobbit. Because, you know, I want, it, I want that to be in the highest quality, right? Yeah. Um, but most movies are, you know, you watch them once, you never think about it again. 99% of movies, 99% of TV shows, you don't want it. Maybe, maybe you're one of those people who likes to own TV shows, but I think most people, it's fine just to say, I'm going to watch it, and then when I've watched it, it's done. Homeland I watched on demand, right? Uh, now, your cable company offers on demand. They realize that's how most people want to watch. And if you subscribe to premium channels, HBO or Showtime or Stars, you can watch those on demand. Uh, I watched Downton Abbey. I didn't watch it uh, Sunday nights. I watched it uh, when I felt like it on demand, and that was that's a good way to do that. But if you but but let's say you don't want a cable company, May, because the problem with cable company is that you can't buy things a la carte. You can't just say I just want that show. In most cases, you can't even say I just want that channel. You have to buy a package. Of course, they know that. That's how you how they get you how you get your cable bill up. So increasingly we're moving to a world where you don't have to have anything but a high-speed connection and a way to connect your TV to the Internet. And that's where these boxes come in. The Apple TV is one. It has a library of stuff you can go through iTunes and watch. Nice feature of that is if you do buy a movie there, you know, there's no physical media, but iTunes remembers that you own it and you can watch it anytime until Apple goes away or iTunes goes away or the sun explodes and consumes the earth in a fiery ball of flame but at some point you obviously it won't work anymore but for probably for the next few years uh, there's other boxes like the apple tv though I, apple tv is nice but it's you know it does hulu it does the nba it does the um, major league baseball it does hockey it uh, it's inc got an increasing number of things but it doesn't do amazon for instance you may be the amazon streaming is great especially if you're an amazon prime customer there's lots of movies Everything does Netflix, seven ninety nine a month. I like Roku. Roku just came out. It's r o k u labs dot com. They just came out with their new Roku three, which I've me of course immediately ordered because, well, why not? They're they're not expensive. It's about a hundred bucks. There's a couple of new features that I'm very interested in. One is there's, this is kind of cool. The remote control has headphones. So you can watch, plug your headphones into the remote control, and now I don't know how well this works, but I presume it works well, and 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 have private audio. So I can watch my TV with headphones on, and I don't have to stretch headphones all the way across the room. That's kind of nice. But there's something interesting going on here. Roku has the most channels. What they don't have, they have everything the Apple TV has except iTunes. So if you're big into the iTunes, then you're going to want that. What Roku has and Apple TV has, as most of them have now, is HBO Go. That's kind of an interesting thing. HBO is making it possible to watch their stuff on demand, except you have to have a cable subscription to HBO to do it. Oh, no, not good for cord cutters. A lot of the stuff, though, like uh, Vudu, which is a movie rental uh, store comparable to the iTunes store, Hulu Plus, and Netflix, Amazon will give you most of, the, most of the movies you want, many of the TV shows you want. But here's the interesting thing. Time Warner Cable has done a deal with Roku. You can watch Time Warner Cable on this box, including live TV. W what? Now, you have to be a subscriber. But this, let's say you're a Time Warner Cable customer. you got a cable box in your you know, living room. But you could put this in your bedroom without a cable box, without a cable connection, just an internet connection, and watch time, watch everything you'd watch on your cable box in the living room. That's kind of interesting. I wonder if the other cable companies will go along with this. At this point, the Roku suddenly becomes a cable box. 
And it is the, we're moving in the direction, I believe. Uh, the cable Look, the cable companies don't want to become an Internet service provider only. They don't think there's enough money in it. They really still want to sell you premium stuff. And it may be, <laughs> my poor mom, <laughs> she got the triple play bundle, right, from her cable company. And it may be just sending, selling you TV, phone, and Internet because I can't even imagine what her bill must be <laughs> to have all three. And they, they say, well, it's convenient. They don't say it's cheaper. They say it's convenient. And it is, you know, I guess one bill, right? I I love this idea of the cable companies just becoming internet service providers. Maybe they maybe Time Warner could be a gatekeeper and say, "Look, we want to provide you access to the premium channels so you can pay us a little bit for that." But I I just I I think we are moving toward a time when these cables really remember how cable companies started. You had to have if you lived in a marginal area, you weren't close to a big city, you'd have to have a big antenna on the roof, and you may not be able to get all the channels. So some smart fella said, "I'm going to put up a giant antenna, receive those those big city stations, then then dig a trench to your house, put a cable to your house, and now you can watch this using my big antenna, so I get better reception than you do." That's how cable started. And uh, they've been trying to adapt to the times, but frankly, you know, times have changed. In fact, I think, you know, m more and more television is going to be delivered over the Internet, including locals. That's just a matter of time, right? So the cable companies are desperately trying to figure, how do we rejigger our business to stay in business? They were smart to add Internet because that, that's something, you know, that's a nice business. Now they have a big fat pipe in your house. They already had one. They had the, that copper cable going in your house. Hey, we could put internet over that. That was smart. But th what they didn't maybe think about is that soon you wouldn't want to buy television from them. You just would want to buy bits from them and then buy television directly from HBO. They're fighting that one. They're fighting that one. So this will be very interesting to watch. Things are changing rapidly and nothing is perfect yet. But I think we're moving in the right direction. And this, this new Roku is a very interesting example. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Ah. Oh, no. In the U.S., they count it all. They count it all. Epson projectors showcase amazing color brightness for brilliant images. Coldwater Canyon, Laurel Canyon, because you couldn't get TV in the canyons, so they'd put an antenna on the on the ridge and, and dig a trench to your house. One brightness. Yow. Oh yes, yeah, Sherlock. You know, I I'm in halfway through it. I don't want to finish it. <laughs> I know it's really good. I love the BBC Sherlock. Oh my goodness, it's good. Yeah, this is really intriguing. I, I got it because of the uh, remote, of course, the uh, audio on the remote. That, I hope that sounds good because that will be really a nice feature. Really a nice feature. Um, I don't care about gaming. Um, I think the most interesting thing is this, is, and they don't mention it in their... In their uh, cell page but i read about this time warner thing and i find that very intriguing yeah the blockbuster store in town's gone i don't think we have a vi video store in town anymore do we dvd or anything don't know if it'll be available in canada i don't know what the roku situation is in uh internationally i don't know i don't The Citadel. What is the Citadel? The Roku app is apparently about to be updated heavily. So uh, I, I, you, the current Roku app's okay, but apparently they're going to do major updates. Similar to the Xbox, although simpler. Much simpler. Yes, sir. Well, I like soup, of course. Well, I, whatever kind you think is good. You know what I like. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. The headphones work great. There's no latency and... That's pretty cool. Right. Okay, here's a concern. Is the remote rechargeable? How fast are you going to go through batteries if you're using it as a headphone app? That's a good point. I'll have to use rechargeable batteries. John points out that you'll be you, you'll be draining the, re the huh? Maybe it is. I don't see it. Uh, is the remote rechargeable? Somebody has it in the chat room. 
Or do you have to j just put in new batteries? Maybe it is rechargeable. That would be a good way to do it. I do have my Acer laptop here. You know what? I'm going to have to eat. I think I'm going to have to eat some Crow on. Chromebook. Chrome OS. Huh? Well, I ordered the Pixel just for review, but um, I, you know, I'm reviewing the Samsung um, $250 Chromebook for Before You Buy. It's not so bad for a lot of what I do. So I may end up using the Pixel because I think it has an HDMI port. Yeah. Well, I ordered the um, 3G one, so I won't be here for a couple of weeks. But uh... oh, we do have red boxes. You know what? We do have red boxes. Come to think of it. So yeah, this is the uh, the floating laptop. Why am I so an Apple weenie? Let me think. What did I just been talking about here? Chrome OS, Windows 8, Roku. Yeah, I'm such an Apple weenie. Man, I just can't stop talking about Apple. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Neil, why are you such an Apple weenie? <laughs> yeah, I'm such an Apple weenie. Such a nitwit. Why are you such a nitwit, sir? May, may I ask you that? <laughs> I said Pixel. That's the new Chromebook. Hey, Leo, you got a Carbonite live read here. <laughs> Watching TV. Yeah. Watching TV. Hmm. Watching TV. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Thanks to Kyle Benham, our musical director. Kyle will uh, publish his playlist on his Google Plus account at the end of the show. Uh, that's K-Y-L-E-B-E-N-H-A-M on Google Plus. But we also put it on our show notes. Those show notes, thanks to James DeRuvo, as long as I'm naming names, he uh, is writing down what I say and putting links to it up on the website, Labs. Dot com. So you don't have to ever, you know, if I mention something, don't go, oh, give me a pencil, Marge. Quick, I got to write this down. No, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you just, all you need to do is go to tech, just remember techguylabs.com. Everything we talk about will be there. In fact, after the show, I like this. Josh Windish here on our staff, our Tech Guy Labs, he's our Tech, tech Guy Lab Master. The Lab Master, Josh, will uh, put up audio and video of the show along with the question and answer pairs. So every question and every answer, you can go to it. You can listen or watch as I as the question is asked and as the answer is given. And then um, comment, and I hope you will, because uh, I love to get the additional input. If you say, you know what I think? You got a voice too. Techguylabs.com. <laughs> The Mac and Josh. That's, yeah, but I, I'm going to call him the Lab Master from now on. Uh, let's get back to the phones. Richard's in Coventry, Rhode Island. Hey, Richard, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Leo. Hey. Um, I'm visually impaired, and um, by way of watching TV, I listen to it. Now, um, I have Verizon cable, and as I understand, when, when, when you land on a show, uh, it tells you on the screen what the show program is. Yeah, but of course they don't say it out loud, do they? That's uh, what I'm looking yeah. for. Brain about a TV that is audible for the blind. That is a great question, and you'd think that the ADA would somehow require this capability. Uh, in but you know, cable seems to get away with everything. They are yeah, they well, seem I to be so unregulated. Vision out there yeah. that had had that. Capability. So so you're looking for a TV with voiceover or a cable box with voiceover. Um, Boy, I'd love to know if maybe one of these Roku's or anything has voiceover. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Let's let's look now. Scooter X in the chat room says there is a, something called descriptive video service. Okay. Um, yeah. And it's um. It sounds like they are doing something along these lines, but maybe it's built into the television network. I guess it is. It's almost kind of you know what it is. You're familiar with it, I bet. It's uh, it's closed captioning that adds the feature of describing what's on the screen. Yes, um, I, I I heard that was SAP, but I haven't 
found a program that has that. But what you really want, yeah, well, you can have SAP, but uh, what you really want is something in the cable box that does that because that's separate from the TV programming. Because um, it seems like when I call Verizon, they're totally lost. They don't uh, know. Yeah. They can't help me as a blind person. That's like, too bad. Like if I channel surf, if, if I start on channel 119 and channel up and then about five times, I don't know what channel I'm yeah, on. Yeah, of course not. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking for audible things like that. Right. If you were on a computer... It would say, you know, you can have voiceover, you could have JAWS, you could have something running that says, here's where you are, here's what's going on. I I heard the expression, smart TV. Yeah, they're I not that smart. <laughs> I didn't know if that helped. Well, they are smart. They have apps. They're more like computers. But I yeah. don't know if they have some sort of voiceover or screen reading capability. I don't... I haven't seen one. This is a great... Unfortunately, Richard, the answer is I don't know. Will you keep listening for a little bit? Maybe somebody will let us know. I will. Um, how about Apple? Um, the, the Apple TVs, no? You know, Apple's really good on accessibility in terms of um, the iPhone and the iOS and even the yeah. desktop computer. I don't no. think they've got voiceover built into the Apple TV. I've been listening... To oh, wait a minute. No, Patella says, yes, there is voiceover in the Apple TV. Okay, there, there is. is, yeah. Okay, so I'll go check out an Apple TV. And there. another, boy, the chat room is great. Uh, Pat2468 yeah. tells me that you should look at acb.org. Yes. And they have a audio description project. It's the American Council of the Blind. Okay. And their audio description project is, is pretty much exactly uh, what you want. They want to yeah. make a program guide that yep. speaks out loud and i think they do it via telephone but that's okay. but that's not going to tie to your cable box which is what you really want yeah. yeah there may be well wait a minute now it looks like some converter boxes yeah it says in the sap option you might be able to tell for instance the uh uverse box there are different you know if you can get uh if i don't know if you have a screen reader and you can read this page it's certainly accessible uh, if you, uh, I, I can have my mother read or it. Or have your mom read it to you. Yeah. It's very complicated. So, okay. um, for instance, um, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just looking at it right now. You're in Rhode Island, but let's say uh, a Springfield, Missouri Dish Network user reports that he has a Model 322 set-top box that uses the remote to select alternate for audio language. As a blind user, he describes the actual process this way. You hit the menu button, the number six, the number two, now arrow right. Now and then you and then it starts talking to you. So there are boxes that will talk to you. Okay. Yes, I just need to be pointed to where. Yeah. So you need to know what kind of set top box you have, and yeah. then um, uh, you know it sounds like it's hit and miss, but that they have some capability here. Hey, okay. Thank so you to the. There is hope. <laughs> thank you to the chat room. There is hope. Uh, the yeah. and the uh, American uh, uh, Council of the Blind has a web page acb.org. We'll put a, put this in the show notes. Okay. Slash ADP, the Audio Description Project. Obviously, they're trying to solve this. Yeah. And yeah. Um, uh, you know, that's great. I'm glad to see that's being done. And keep listening, Richard. If we have other solutions, uh, I'll mention it on the air. Of course, we could put it on our website, too. TechGuyLabs.com. Uh, you know, and I think this is some of this is in response to uh, the uh, American uh, Americans with Disabilities Act, the ADA. Uh, they have links on how to file a complaint with the FCC if, if your television uh, doesn't do this. Uh, the FCC last year voted unanimously to reinstate video description, effective July 2012, for ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC, USA, the Disney Channel. So th these are this is video description behind the scenes, but we also want a set-top box that will do this, and it looks like some of them will. Um, it says lots of people are reporting success after contacting their local cable or satellite provider. So call Verizon. You said you did, and they had no idea. If they are not cooperative or unsuccessful in resolving your situation, just say, hey, I'll be filing a complaint with the FCC <laughs> that you will have to answer. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And there's a link to the, uh, the form for filing a complaint. So there is a, a legal requirement that they help you out with this. That's good. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Eric in Los Angeles, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Eric. Hey, Leo. Thanks for your patience. So your TV died? Yeah, it's, 
I was, matter of fact, two of them died, which is really, you know, doubling up on Jeopardy here. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I have right. no idea what happened, but I got I got a new TV now, honey. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I know it's like, okay, where am I going to go shopping, and what am I going to go look for? I, every time I listen to your show, I mean, I've been watching your show religiously for Call for Help and all of that. It's confusing, just, isn't it? And it changes. Tell you what, Eric, we're going to take a break for news at the top of the hour. I will help Eric buy a TV, help you all buy a TV when we come back. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. You're tuned to Premier Channel 7. Leo Laporte, yeah, the tech home. guy, will begin at six minutes past the hour. Is our From site supporting IE10? The video won't start. You probably have to use desktop. Let me look. It's a sublime broken IE10. Let me, uh, so is that on uh, our... Let me look. So I'm going to watch live. Channel 7. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, will begin at six minutes past the hour from Premier Radio Networks. Seems to be working. So full screen. All right, so let's try full screen. Toggle full screen. Seems to be working. You know what? You got it. I hope you're not using the Metro. That's probably, I bet you a lot of people are using Metro. You know what? So that's the desktop this is uh, IE. Channel 7. You got to use desktop IE. And this is just twit.tv. This is the regular player. So let me um, let me close that. And I bet you the problem is, and this is the this is in my opinion the big problem with uh, Windows 8. So now I'm in a different kind of Extended Explorer that looks exactly the same. The only difference is the thing is down here. I bet you this doesn't work. Bet you that's the problem. But it wouldn't just be us. It'd be a lot of people. Watch live. No, it works. Oh, <laughs> well, that's weird. All right. So it works fine for me. Maybe they fixed it. Channel 7. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, will begin at six minutes past the hour from Premier Radio Network. That's just terrible, isn't it? That's mean to me. So um, I don't. I don't oh, so okay, let's try live.twit.tv, which is not the same player. We don't use uh, Sublime on Live, right? From Premier Radio Network. Do live.twit. By the way, I got twitlive.tv back. Let's see. Now this is Flash, not Sublime, right? Seems like it's working there. This is in Metro. I don't know what to say. This is Premier Channel 7. Leo Must Laporte, be you. The tech guy. We'll begin at six minutes past the hour. It's working fine for me. Radio networks. I just demonstrated it. Mm. Do, 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 do. The echo is because it was coming out through the laptop speakers. Uh, I didn't set up. I was going to set up the Sonos Play Bar last night. I was just too tired. I went to bed. I shall do it, though. I know I love this uh, Acer S7. This is and I'm not so Channel crazy 7. about Windows 8, Leo but Laporte, I love the, the Acer S7. We'll begin at six minutes I don't hate Windows 8. From Premier Radio Network. Just weird. Yeah, we're going to do Lamar's uh, show. We're still looking for a title. Maybe you twit? I don't know if that's good. That, might not, that may be too confusing. Sometimes be, having a uh, clever name is a bad idea. I have tried the new Sim City. I got it right on here. You're tuned to perhaps Premier you, uh, Channel 7. Perhaps Leo you saw the... The tech guy will begin at the, uh, six minutes past the hour. Sim City Premier Radio icon Network. there. Do, 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 do. Uh, Danny, just email ads at twit.tv. It's quite expensive, just to warn you. 
Yeah, I would recommend this. I really, I uh, really like it a lot. Oh yeah, you use touch all the time. There's just some certain places it's natural, so what's nice is having the choice. So sometimes you want to use touch, sometimes you don't. Yeah, my local server's down a lot too. Uh, you know, Maxis, I mean, um, EA realizes they just blew it. Twins, this week in network streams. Uh, I'm I'm uh, on on the Windows 8. I use uh, Explorer all the time. It just looks better. On um, on uh, I use Chrome a lot on uh, other devices. It's hard to decide. Max's T-shirts. How exciting! See, I can't. It's such a small target. Now oh, what's going on? Oh, go away. Yeah, I really do want to like SimCity. I'm off Detroit. Well, uh, there's nothing much you can do. We, uh, you know, we have uh, clearance. We try to sell clearances through uh, Premier. You can certainly uh, write to this, the, your local Detroit talk station and say, "Please, sir, take the tech guy." Or write to the station that canceled. Did it cancel? Was there a station that canceled this? Write to them and say, "What? What?" Yes, what is it, tomorrow? When, are we, when does it go on sale, the Google I.O. tickets? I have not played with the Leap Motion. Um, my general experience with that kind of thing is that it's really not a good idea, but uh, I will certainly try one uh, at some point. And I'm sure one of our contributors will review one on DYB. Uh, uh, you can always email, by the way, byb at twit.tv with recommendations for things you'd like to see reviews of. We always want to hear about that. Oh, here we go. I bet you get free glasses, yeah. I mean, I, I've i got my reservation from last year. But... Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy time to talk about mm -hmm. technology computers the internet cell phones home theater all that jazz digital photography phone number 8888 ask leo 888-827-5536 that's toll free from anywhere in the u.s of a outside the u.s so you can still call use a voip product like skype and uh, it'll still be free because it's a toll free call inside the u.s 888-827-5536 we were talking with uh Eric in Los Angeles, two TVs died, a signal from above. It's time to buy a new TV. Yeah, is it solar flares or whatever that helped me? I don't know what happened. <laughs> Cosmic. Well, it's just they gave up the ghost. So w tell me what you're looking for. Or well, I'm looking for something that's affordable. But, but most important for me, I mean, it's a buying experience. I I'm, I'm probably will go to like Best Buy, Target, yeah. Sears, Costco, but I'd like to know you know, what would be the best place to go to buy a good quality TV? And you know, no, Nothing honestly. wrong with going to a Best Buy or a big box store at all. Um, you know, Certainly, since you're looking for a low-cost TV, they'll have a good selection of low-cost TVs. You cannot judge a TV on any showroom floor. That's the first thing to understand. Okay. You, you'll stand in front of it and look at it, and it'll look great. But they've set these TVs to a mode, usually it's called dynamic or... Uh, something similar that is very bright because it's a bright showroom floor and that and that just appeals to people because the colors are so saturated but it's not actually how you would want to watch it at home so you cannot really judge it's very hard to judge and you know that's an interesting thing because you know where we're going to probably put the tvs there is going to be a glare issue because we do have a window that will probably give us a lot of sunlight okay. and what i want to try to do is just make sure that 
whatever TV we get is going to minimize the glare but right. give us a good quality picture. Well, the first the first decision point uh, you make usually is between plasma and LCD, and LCD is better for that situation. It's brighter. Now you're going to see something LED. LED. Right is uh, just a form of backlighting on an LCD. It's still an LCD TV. So don't get, oh, okay. don't get fooled by that. That's a very common misconception. LCD, same kind of technology used in laptop and computer displays, flat panel displays, liquid crystal, means it's just a shutter that lets light through and it lets the appropriate color through at the appropriate time. The difference is the light where it's coming from and older lcds used fluorescent tubes now they're using leds which give better performance they last longer um, they're more consistent they're and and they have some additional features not all tvs will do this but you can get local area dimming which will give you better blacks because the negative on lcd the advantage of plasma is that uh, the negative on lcds is that they are a little slower Re they call it response time so your old TV, the ones that died, had an instantaneous response time. We, we measure response time in, in the amount of time it takes for a dot on the screen to go from all the way off to all the way on and back all the way off. On, okay. on a CRT, the old school TVs, it was zero, effectively zero. Uh, on a plasma, it's effectively zero. But on an LCD, it's several milliseconds. Uh, and they've gotten them down. It used to be many milliseconds, like 20 milliseconds. And now, now it's down to four, between four and nine. Now, the, what is the impact of that? Well, when there's a lot of action, it gets softer, it blurs, because it's not keeping up with the action. Uh, so if I'm watching sports like basketball or football, there might be a little bit of a delay I might notice? That's right. Well, it's not delay. It's, it, it's a, a blurring, so it's not as crisp. When, when the player's moving, it's as if they have trails. Now, you won't be able to see it, but what you'll see is it, it just won't be as crisp. They handle this. This is going to, this is, we're giving you a primer and LCD uh, nomenclature. They handle this by doubling the refresh rate or sometimes even tripling the refresh rate. So the normal refresh rate for a television is 60 fields or 60 frames in progressive per second. And what they do is they double it to 120. So you'll see 120 hertz refresh rate on the box or on the sign, or sometimes even 240 hertz uh, refresh rate. That's actually quadrupling it, isn't it? But the problem is there's no there's no more information than, than there was with 60 frames. So what they do is they interpolate. They make up the in-between frames. But what it does do is it gives you a, a higher refresh rate, gives you a crisper for a, a view for action, for for sports and for action movies. In my opinion, it also gives the, the video a, um, a, more, a more plastic y feel. I don't like it. I always turn it off. To me, okay. it's a worse side effect. But you could, that's one thing you could go to a store and look at is, ha is say, can you turn, if you have a nice salesperson, can you, and probably a big box store, you won't, but, uh, but in a, you know, a, a store dedicated to selling TVs, you will. You, can you say, can you turn off the 120 hertz? Let me see what it looks like with and without. And you'll see okay. the difference. Some people like it. If you, it sounds like you watch sports. You might prefer it, um, but some people don't. Now, okay. and the other side of it is like, yeah, I do have a Sony Trinitron. Well, I have two Sony Trinitrons, so yeah, I those have are the nice cables. TVs. Now, is cabling going to be something that I need? Yeah, to it's all different. What's up? It's all different. In fact, we get we've been getting a lot of calls the last few days from people who have old TVs and they've moved to new TVs. There's only one kind of input on most new TVs, and that's HDMI, and it's a digital input, and it will and it will want HDMI from your devices. You may have to buy all new devices. You will almost certainly want to buy a new DVD player. Well, I'm not too worried about the DVD. I just bought a, uh, a Blu-ray disc. So oh, if you got Blu-ray, you got HDMI. Okay, I'm good on that. It's yeah, then you're in good shape. If you've got Blu-ray, that's good. Your VCR, you know, won't work, but who cares, right? <laughs> you're not going to want to watch any v VHS tapes on that thing. It will look terrible because what the difference is that Trinitron, as good as those were, the resolution is so low that it hide it, hide, hide it. it hid a lot of defects, which you will suddenly see on a high-def screen. And so you watch old TV or old videotapes, and they just look awful. Oh, really? Yeah, because you're seeing stuff you never saw before. You're seeing all the the lack of detail. So well, your cable box probably has HDMI, your satellite box. Your your Blu-ray certainly does. So I think you're good on that. Well, is there a 
there a difference in the cable? I know that, you know, I'm not so much of an audio file, TV file to say that I want the best cabling. No, no, no. Cabling only mattered in, in the old days with analog like your Trinitron. With digital, it's all the same. Get the cheapest. They're going to try to upsell you. If you go to a fancy TV store, they'll try to sell you a $100 HDMI cable. Don't buy it. Go to okay. if you don't if you don't go to monoprice.com, they're like three dollars and they're just as good because it's digital. Okay. It's digital. That's my price range. Yeah, three dollars, perfect. <laughs> Monoprice has very good HDMI. Make sure you get uh, version one point four HDMI, and they're very good and they're cheap. But okay. do, but don't get them from, don't get them if they try to upsell you. You know, if you go to the big box stores, they won't. Brand names to look at. So we're getting a, we're going to get an LED backlit LCD for your situation because you want bright. Right. Um, and you'll see most of the screens in L in the LCD are not super reflective, but you might want to go look at them and, and, and pick one that's not very reflective. Okay. And then uh, you're probably going to look at brands. Now, the big box stores will have Vizio, which I think is a good second-tier brand. They're very affordable, but they get you get very good performance from them. I think they're excellent. They'll also have Sharp and Samsung. And if the price isn't too different, I would go with a Samsung or a Sharp. I like those. But okay. if but if price is uh, something you care about, uh, Vizio is a very good choice at a lower price. Perfect. Thanks, Leo. I really appreciate. Yeah, it. you're gonna Eric. You're gonna be thrilled. I, 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 if you use good, if like you watch a Blu-ray, make sure you get a good Blu-ray disc of a movie you love, and oh, yeah. watch it, and you'll see the difference immediately. Well, I won't be embarrassed by having some friends over. <laughs> you want us to watch the Super Bowl on what? <laughs> yeah, no, you'll be much happier. Now, the other thing, and, and this is always a little bit of a shock for people, um, you're going to get a bigger screen size than you think. Uh, you're, you know, tube TVs, in order to get even 32 inches, were massive because they're tubes. But now right. we're talking uh, flat panels. Uh, tip, you don't really want to go, depending on how big your room is, how far back you're sitting, you're going to start at 42 inches. And if you're sitting back maybe 8 feet, 7 or 8 feet, you want to go to 55 inches. Sitting back a little farther, you might even want to go to 65 inches. You want bigger than you think. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Notice I didn't mention 3D once. Smart TV is an interesting question. You're going to get a smart TV. They're all smart now. You can't get a dumb TV anymore. But uh, notice I still buy a Roku box. I still like the Apple TV. I think that, uh, you know, my, vis my uh, Viera, my Panasonic Viera, which is an excellent TV and is the best smart TV I've used, still isn't as good as a Roku or an Apple TV. This weekend, top streams, twits. That's interesting. I don't want to actually have it sound like Twitter, and I may not even want to use this week. Calicast did this week in YouTube, so I can't do that. Yeah, we were talking about that, Knox. Guess you just joined us. No, uh, no area yet. But I don't really care. You can't get local live on um, either yet, Geek Force. Although it's it's rumored that Time Warner will be offering local on the Roku 3. But you'll have to have a Time Warner sub. This week in Tube. Twit Tube. We were thinking of you, Twit. I kind of like that. Have I, t I should talk about ShareFile. I have the urge. Where's my... Ah, uh, you know about ShareFile, right? Have I told you about this? So, uh, here's the issue, and business is a real problem. Um, you're especially in some industries where you have government regulation for privacy and security, like medical and you know the, the HIPAA requirements for medicine. When you're sharing files, I don't care if it's patient records, drawings, PowerPoint presentations, audio, which I share. You know, I'm always sharing the uh, audio with the radio stations, uh, video. The bigger these files are, and they're getting bigger and bigger all the time, you got the problem. You just don't want to attach them to email. The, the, the email will bounce back anything more than a few megabytes, right? Uh, they're not private, so you can't. You absolutely cannot use email for sharing patient records, for instance. HIPAA prohibits it. You need a, a strong 
secure solution. And this is where ShareFile is so great. They've got ShareFile for pretty much every industry. In fact, if you go to ShareFile.com and you do our 30-day free trial, use the promo code TechGuy, first thing they'll say is, well, what industry? And you don't have to pick an industry, but do if you're, if you're in legal or medical or, uh, you know, you're uh, in the trades, if you're in media, whatever. They have, you know, I don't know, dozens of different industries. And they'll customize it for you. Now, when you're sharing a file, it's very easy to do. They have an Outlook plugin, so it looks like email to you. Or you, I use the website. You have all these parameters you can set. Uh, how many times the file can be downloaded? For how long? You get an email you can, when you when the file is downloaded. You can even password protect it so nobody else, you know, only the recipient can open it. All of these things make it private, secure. You keep control. It's easy to use. Integrates into your business, your workflow, very simply. And there's a nice feature. I sync, you know, my share file folders. I have a couple of share file folders that are auto automatically syncing all the time whenever there's a change. And then I can go look at them. I have a share file app on my smartphone and my tablet. And that's nice because that means I can, if somebody calls me and says, hey, I need X, Y, Z, I can do it right from the tablet or the smartphone. Millions of professionals rely on share file every day. I want you to try it free. 30-day free trial. Go to sharefile.com. Click the microphone at the top of the homepage and use the offer code TECHGUY. What is this? <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888 Ask Leo. That's the phone number, 888 827 5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or uh, if you're in Canada or England or Australia or Japan or anywhere around the world, you can also call uh, using Skype or some sort of wipeout. 8888 Ask Leo. I love spending your money, by the way. If you want to buy a new TV, you call me. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what to buy. I'll tell you. Uh, Chris from Texarkana, Texas, our next caller. Hi, Chris. Hey, how's it going, Leo? It's great. How you doing? Not too bad. The uh, reason for my call today is um, I've been having this problem for the last few months where I try to load uh, various different kinds of computers. Uh, it could be a laptop, desktop, Dell, Gateway, doesn't matter. Um, and I try to load them with Windows 7. Now, they're usually no more than three years old. And I have uh, different uh, burn copies of Windows 7 Ultimate. I also have uh, backed up on ISO format in three different locations, including in the cloud, <laughs> so that if my CDs get scratched, I can go burn a fresh copy. Smart that way man. Wow, you are, you are prepared. Well, I have it on a thumb drive as well as a bootable thumb drive. Yeah, I do too. That's a good way to do that, yeah. yeah. I know. Well, the reason for all the variations is because when I go to install it lately, and this is just the last few months, it gets to about 27% or at the most 47%, and it stops and says the files are corrupted, nothing will be saved, please try to reinstall from a different uh, Now, is this on the same computer? It's uh, different computers. It doesn't Different matter. computers That's and fine. different sources. Here's the kicker. Windows 8 will install on every one of those machines with no problem. <laughs> well, I think, I think the Microsoft gods are telling you something, aren't they? We don't want yes, you to. So. Well, that I, that is bizarre. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. You're trying it from a lot of different sources. Is it all though coming from the same source, original source? Maybe that was bad. Well, it, that's what I thought. But I mean, I, I've used. I, I originally. Do you have original? Do you have um, what you really want to try? Is a Microsoft hologram? You know, labeled. Install disk, like the original install disk. Do you have any of those lying around? No, unfortunately not. Yeah. I was trying to save myself. A so couple my of suspicion is that you you got you know your original source had some damaged files, and you've just been propagating it through all of these different sources. That's what I was thinking too. But yeah. it, just, it was weird because the original CD, I had used it, no problems. All of a sudden, this started. I went back to my original ISO format which I had three different copies at different well, times. See, it's the only logical conclusion because it, you know, it's not Microsoft's deciding suddenly this isn't going to work because, if it, believe me, you wouldn't be the only caller if they did. We'd be right. <laughs> The yeah. lines would be jammed with people saying, Windows 7 no longer works. Um, so, you know, and I keep a USB key of Windows 7 around uh, because it, you're right. It's really nice to have the operating system on a... On, a, on some form that you can install very quickly. But if the master that you copied all of these ISOs, ISO stands for, uh, uh, well, it stands for International Standards Organization, but it's, what it really is is a, um, a, uh, a file that duplicates the install disk. So it's kind of like a freeze-dried install disk on, the, on this thumb drive. 
Uh, in fact, it even says Windows 7 install on, on this drive I'm holding up that you can't see because it's the radio. Uh, it, that If that original master that you copied from is damaged, well, th then so will the ISO be and every ISO copied from that. So that's... The, you know, I mean, unless I'm unless my logic is flawed, I can't think of any other reason that would be. Either the ISOs are messed up, or the drive you're copying it onto. Now, it could be that has has flaws on it, and so it cannot accept the install. And that's why the first question I said was, "Are you installing it on the same machine?" And you said no. So if you're trying on different hard drives from different sources, can't be the hard drives. Got to be the source, the original source. Now you can, I think, download. Uh, a ISO of Windows directly. Chat room's giving me a link. The official, we'll put this in the show notes, the official direct download links of Ultimate Professional and Home Premium. So the reason Microsoft will let you download this is because it's no good without a key anyway. And presumably you do have that key. So what I would say is get a new image. Get a new image that, uh, and just put that on one of your keys and try that. And I bet you that's going to fix it. Just from a pure logic point of view, there's no there's no reason why one would uh, would assume anything but that this original ISO was damaged. This just couldn't possibly be. This is the disk you'll be downloading is a uh, is an OEM version, but it should work with if you have the right uh, kind of serial number, right kind of key. And if you don't, you can call Microsoft. They're nice about these things, as long as you aren't aren't a pirate. Laura in West Hill, California. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Laura. Hi, Leo. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good, thanks. I have two questions for you if you have time, because I know you're such a busy man. Um, my friend and I would like to do um, some video recording with two cameras. We want it to go along with our podcast, and we want it to do two cameras, ideally, with two lavalier mics. So is there some kind of special video camera that we have to look for um, and that we so need to read? with lavalier mics how does that work <laughs> um this is great what is your podcast about um we're dog trainers oh that's great uh and two cameras so normally what you would do in a situation like this is you could each camera could have its own audio yeah right so um you want to pick a camera that will accept external audio inputs that's not all of them but mm -hmm. even some camcorders will have a mini jack for audio you know if you look around we use um, and I have used for this Canon uh, Vixias, uh, the I think it was the I um, can't remember what model it was, but uh, if you look at those, they'll have mini jacks that you could then put a, a microphone into. Um, you want to go wireless? Yeah, ideally because we're going to be working with a dog, and we and we don't know. You yeah, know. right. You don't want to. And it's kind of annoying to have wires uh, going back to the camera. Yeah, exactly. So um, th now this gets expensive. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cheap. How are we talking? Uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Because cheap wireless is a bad idea. Right. Uh, you'll get interference. Remember the, the Spinal Tap uh, scene where they're playing at the Air Force Base and they're using a wireless guitar box and all of a sudden they get the squawks from the uh, incoming jets over yeah. the... <laughs> That's what you don't <laughs> want. And, and, and really, you do have to spend some money. John, what do we use uh, for our wireless uh, microphones? Because we've tried all kinds. We've tried... We've tried uh, Sennheiser and stuff, but we ended up with Electrosonic. No E, Electro, elect, Electro, L-E-C, no E, L-E-C-T-R-O, Sonic. And how much is that going to cost our caller here, huh? Are we gonna we're gonna break the bank for Laura's dog training podcast? <laughs> the transmitter, each microphone, seven hundred fifty bucks. Ooh, okay. Sorry, a thousand dollars per microphone. You're killing not me. Not include. Say again. No, 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 no. It's not including the mic, but for every microphone you want. I know. Well, I'm telling you. Okay. You wanted wireless. <laughs> I warned you. Yeah. yeah okay. So a thousand per mic. So that'd be two thousand dollars. Then you only need one receiver, right? That'll receive multiple mics. So seven hundred fifty bucks for the receiver. Or no, do we need one for each mic? No. One for each mic. So let's see. That's uh, two thousand plus a hundred fifteen hundred is three thousand five hundred dollars plus mics. Okay. Do you still want to do it? Well. No. <laughs> maybe there's a less expensive way we can. Uh, let's talk about it when we come back. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <laughs> I got to tell you, we tried them all. These, we've never had RF problems with these, right? 
That's the that's everything else you have RF problems with. Yeah. We. Part of the problem is. Well, she wants to be outside training dogs. Yeah, but we're talking about you know technology conventions. Yeah, technology, and even at a technology convention, these work fine, right? Oh, we haven't. We don't know. We've only used them in the studio. But this is a very RF noisy uh, environment. I am so sorry. You want to take that keyboard? And from now on, do not give me. Put it in the contigo. Somebody's got to clean this. I'll clean it. I'll wash it after every show. I promise. Um, and I feel bad because uh, now I have soup too. I mean, I oh, I don't know what to do. You know, normally in a radio studio, they do not allow this stuff so for this reason alone. If you're in, uh, this area, right? These have these That's the problem with wireless. So we're gonna try something besides wireless for her. We're gonna talk about a boom mic. I think that's a, a lot cheaper, right? Yeah, with a big wind muff. Hey, Eli. How are you? How's school? You're a sophomore? Almost done with the sophomore year. God, I feel so bad. John is like, has to crawl under here and... Oh, look, there's more drips. This is disgusting. Of course, it was coffee with cream and sugar. <laughs> Problem is, you start cheap and... Um, and it doesn't work. It costs more than if you buy the right thing right out of the box. True. As we have learned. <laughs> Wireless is just a bad idea, to be honest. Sure PG4s. What is? Sure. And those are only a few hundred bucks. Yeah, you're right. Twit would fall apart without John. It's falling apart with John, but at least he's keeping it. He's holding it together with bailing wax. Is there such a thing as bailing wax? No signal. Holy cow. Is this a new keyboard or just a clean keyboard? Well, uh, not new. <laughs> but yeah, but I mean a replacement. Yeah, it's working. I don't know what it's... Well, but it's not... No, it's It's fine. It's working. It's been around. It's got a lot of... It's been through life. It's seen, it's seen the world. Now, there were drips in here, but I guess we got them all. Okay. Well, there's a couple more here. God, what a... That went everywhere. I am so sorry. I should be shot. I should be fired. I've known people to be fired from radio stations for doing stuff like that. Bailing wax. <laughs> I, I hit my coffee cup like this, and it went all over the most critical area possible, which is right here. So it hit both laptops, it hit the mixer, it hit the keyboard I switched with, and then underneath that, directly right down here, are the ISDN interfaces, the computers that had, basically there could not, there's not a worse place you could spill a cup of coffee. <laughs> Literally. Oh, Lord. And the people listening had no idea. The pit crew came in. I feel like I've had my tires changed. They have a hell of a pit crew. And normally you say chewing gum and bailing wire. want to recommend a very handy device. This is from a company called Contigo, and it is a, uh, a travel mug that seals, and you cannot spill a drop from it. And the reason I mention that is that you didn't notice, I hope, but through the entire last break, I had the pit crew in here swabbing up because I hit my cup of coffee right before we came back from commercial. And it went everywhere, most importantly, on two computers, the mixer, the uh, telephone and interfaces, everything. Just, there's a nice fragrance of coffee with cream and sugar, however. So from now on, John, don't give me coffee in open cups. Just use this. It's not your fault. My fault. Uh, 
it's the problem with owning your own radio station is there's nobody to stop you from doing things like that. When I used to work at a normal studios, they say, you're not bringing that in there, are you? You know what could happen if you spill that. Yes, I've just found out. We were talking with Laura. She's got a podcast. What's the name of it, Laura? Oh, uh, we're called Doggy Dish. It's uh, with I-E for the doggy, not a Y. D-O-G-G-I-E-D-I-S-H. Correct. I love it. Doggy Dish. It's at thedoggydish.com. It's at, well, it's at doggydishradio.com. Oh, there's other doggy dishes, apparently. Oh, yeah, yeah. the doggy dish is an actual dog dish. Okay. <laughs> D-O-G-G-I-E-D-I-S-H radio.com. How cool. Yeah. So radio implies your audio only right now. Yes, it does. And we do have a YouTube channel, which is where oh. these videos are hopefully and going to be You going. thought it would be so cool to go to video. And, of course, it would be for dog training. You want to see the dog. You want to see the trainer. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we talk about that would just be so much better video. You there's, know, a, sure. there's a reason why there's so many audio podcasts. Mm -hmm. It's a lot cheaper. Yeah. And a lot you know, simpler. As soon as you add video, and, you know, I'm, I'm, the, <laughs> I'm the classic case here. Uh, we were just an audio network for so long, and then I thought, well, video. Everybody's talking about video. Truthfully, we're just talking heads. We don't need video. But, uh, oh, let's do it anyway. <laughs> can, yeah. I, can I tell you how much I spent on the uh, Tech Guy Lab Studio? Uh, sure. $1.25 million. Oh, my God. So you don't want to do that. Have that kind of budget. No, you don't. It's a crazy thing to do. There's no way I can recoup that investment ever. It's nuts, uh, but we have we have the best of everything. <laughs> no, I want to. Uh, you don't need so much, okay? So let's see if we can make this easier. Okay. Uh, I think lavalier mics—they're trouble anyway. By the way, okay. um, you, how many people? Is it a trainer? Uh, just two of us. There's two. It's you and a trainer and another trainer, and, and the dog doesn't need a mic. That's good. Um, and, and I say, by the way, I mentioned these electrosonics because we have tried a lot of less expensive solutions like Sony and Shure and, and, unfort and Sennheiser. Unfortunately, uh, the radios are where you really get in trouble uh -huh. because you get a lot of uh, interference. So I'm going to suggest let's not go wireless. There's another way. Okay. It's, it, and you see this in movies, and it's one of the reasons they do this in movies. You see boom microphones. Okay. You can get a direction. Now, this is going to add a person to your crew because you're going to need one person who's just doing the boom microphone. That's what our, my husband is for. That's what husbands are for, aren't they? All <laughs> yeah. the stuff you don't want to do. You, right. And the truth is, you know, you know, you you might, it might be, the truth is operating a camera and, and, and all of that is a fairly skilled thing. You might want to just put the camera, locked it, lock it down mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, have a, have a two shot and just leave it like that. And then use the boom mic. Now, the nice thing about a boom mic, they're very directional. You've seen it before in a movie and TV production. It's like there's a guy with a, yeah. with a stick. <laughs> and he's, he's holding it over his arms. Your husband has to have very strong arms. And he's pointing it. Uh, and this is a, and you'll notice the microphone is what we call a shotgun mic because it's, it's long and thin. And it's highly directional. It rejects noise from the sides, which you want. You're in a park. You don't want all that noise. Yeah. Yeah. But it, but it's very good at picking up a voice six or eight feet away, right below the mic. So, this person holding the boom mic uh, basically pays attention to who's talking and aims it at that person. This is how they do movies, because they, they like, you know, you're not going to be, ha you know, Conan the Barbarian with a lavalier mic. That isn't going to work. <laughs> True. Okay. And I would say, you know, it's a podcast. It's okay if you see the mic in the picture and stuff like that. We're not. We're not trying to be perfect here. The other thing you're going to want to do with a boom mic is you're going to want to make sure if it's in a, you're outdoors, you got wind, that you get something they call very inappropriately for a drug training podcast, a dead kitten. Okay. And it's a big fuzzy, it looks like, well, it doesn't look like a dead kitten exactly, but it's a big fuzzy thing that goes on it that cuts the, uh, the noise. You only okay. need, the nice thing about this is you could have as many people as you want. You only need one boom. If the dog barks, you'll catch that. Okay. You know, you know. Um, and I don't think you have to spend, you know, $2,500 for a boom mic. Oh, good. Yeah. That's <laughs> so, much better. Yeah, much better. And I think you you actually get better results, to be honest with you. Okay. So um, our chat room, James in the chat room, who's our a guy who writes everything down, has found a, a, a blog called Film Flap, in which they talk about making yourself, do-it-yourself boom pole. You can buy boom poles fairly cheaply. It's the mic that's expensive. Uh 
Okay. And um, and but it's not that expensive. All of this will be you know five hundred bucks maybe a lot better. Great. Yeah. Excellent. And, and you know what? You Actually, you'll get better sound than lav mics. The problem with lav mics is they're very small, and they're maybe six inches from the speaker. They pick up a lot of surrounding noise. If you're out in a park, they're not going to be as, as good, to be oh, honest. Oh, okay. Yeah. Excellent. So I think a Great. boom mic is the right way to go for this. Fabulous. All Thank right. you so much. Good luck with uh, the dog. What is it? The doggy? Doggy? Doggy, doggy dish. Doggydishradio.com. Yeah. And what's the name of the YouTube channel? Uh, it's Doggy Dish TV. Doggy Dish TV. That makes sense. Yeah. So you haven't done any yet, huh? No, we haven't done any yet. Now the good news is, uh, you're you're in you're near enough to the film production capital of the world that you could probably find go to somewhere and rent this gear for one day just to see. Yeah, that's a good idea. And it would be a lot cheaper. And maybe just rent it for the production day, do five shows, and uh, and uh, save you a lot of money. You could get better stuff that way, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Excellent idea. Yeah, Great. and you could even that's rent so the much. wireless just to see, you know, the difference. You, sp I spend a lot of money, not just time, but a lot of money on on this stuff um, uh, because you. I think good audio is even maybe more important than good video. Um. It's the fr f film flap is the frugal filmmaker. There, there are lots of people who want to do this. And uh, so there are lots of people who help you do this. I think rental is a great way to go. There are a number of uh, companies that uh, all over the country, really, that will rent AV gear. And there's lots of ways to do this. So it's a good idea, perhaps, before you spend money to try it by renting it. I think Boom is probably the best way to go. Uh, let's see here. Bob is next in uh, Florence, Arizona. Hi, Bob. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hello, Bob. Hello. Hello. Hey, 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 Leo. Hey, Bob. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing better than I deserve. <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I'm a, I'm a, a Ford uh, driver. Uh, company car is a Ford uh, Sync equipped vehicle. Isn't that great stuff? Don't you don't you love that? They really led the way with that. I absolutely. Everybody's love it. doing it now, but uh, they they were the first to do voice control, and I think it's such a good way to do it. Yep, absolutely. Uh, the issue I'm having here, I'm using uh, iPod Touch first generation. Uh, I know, I know. Don't beat me. Up. I don't even know where you find one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not so that old. I mean, uh, for me. it still works great. Uh, and I use it for podcasts. So I'm in and out of the car. Well, hold, hold on. I got to take a break. But when we come back, I will help you with that. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hmm. I really smell like a fresh brewed coffee. <laughs> I think it's me. I got a lot. A lot of it was in my pants. Smoky Bear. You know, what, I've looked in almost uh, every business. Email. What mic is that you uh, you like? Let me scroll back and see if I can see. Thank you for the uh, link, James. And Murray on Travel, absolutely right. Rental, great idea. Great idea. Uh, lighting for go to meeting video with a C920. You know, you, you could really play with different lighting. You, you maybe soften it. <laughs> I think I'm wearing black underwear, so it's all right. Hmm. We like Countryman. Not as good as this. This is the best. And I'm really tempted to use this uh, everywhere. Dead cat. B&H photo has them. Yeah, I actually have that one. <laughs> that fits on the Rode uh, stereo video microphone. I have that one. I'll bring it in someday. That's more of a dead kitty than a dead cat. It's small. It's only about that big. Heil Sound, H-E-I-L, Sound, P-R-40. Yeah, the Yeti's fine. I mean, those are all lower-end kind of consumer-grade mics. This is a good mic. This is a, the best mic made. Um, Yeti's okay. I don't recommend it. 
It's good for a podcast. <clears throat> a lot of our, uh, a lot of our uh, hosts use the Yeti or try to. I usually try to talk them out of it. I like the AT2020. Again, another good podcast mic. These are all USB mics. <clears throat> PR40 is not bad. It's about 300, 350, something like that. These are very affordable. Dynamic mics are cheap. They don't need uh, phantom power. Audio rents. Thank you, Audio Rents. Where are you located? What's your website? <clears throat> AudioRents.com. Hollywood. Help from you now. <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Time for some Scooby snacks. Um, as soon as we started talking about renting uh, audio gear, Audio Rents stepped into our chat room, audiorents.com in Hollywood. This would be a, certainly a place to go uh, to rent any kinds of uh, of microphones and accessories and so forth. Let's just see what a uh, what a boot. Oh, look, they have all sorts of old fashioned and f antiques, and that's cool. For a big variety of stuff you can rent. Sometimes you want an old-fashioned mic. Uh, so the day rate for a uh, boom pole, $20. For a uh, boom mic, I don't see a boom mic. I'll have to keep looking on this. Let's see, boom mic. But, you know, that's the thing is if you rent this, you'll get a much better idea of if this is going to do the job for you. So thank you, Audio Rents, for stopping in. There's a plug. AudioRents.com. We were talking to Bob in Florence, Arizona. He's got a first-gen iPod Touch. And uh, I take it you want to you want to pair it, bond it to your Ford Sync. Oh, I've actually been doing that for several years now. Yeah, it's, it's a nice way to work it, isn't it? It's, uh, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, the trick is that... <laughs> Every time I get out of, if I'm if I'm in the middle of listening to a podcast and I stop to get some gas, yeah, shut the engine off, yeah, get out, get back in, and the the, the iPod, it, it, the whole system initializes, oh, that's it indexes not good. again, <laughs> and lands. Uh, you're connected via USB, not Bluetooth, huh? We're doing it by USB. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying, and, and then for a period of about three months. And I don't know if it was iTunes that upgraded or there was a, a patch that went out through Sync uh, because I did have to do a upgrade to the to the Sync system. I don't think it was at the same time, but there was a, a, about a ninety day period there where you could where it would play the podcast. I'd shut the engine off, get out, go and get a cup of coffee, come back out, turn, start the engine back up, and without touching anything, it would start right back up where it left right. off, exactly in the same spot. So this is a feature of both the iPod and the. Uh in the, in the iTunes, is if it, and it makes sense, if it's a, a song, you almost always want to start over. You don't want to start in the middle of a song. But if sure. it's a movie, a book, uh, you know, spoken word of any kind, uh, video of any kind, you don't want to start up at the beginning. You want to start where you left off. And iTunes and the iPod do this based on a little hidden data in the file that says, this is a podcast. Um, so the problem is, I don't know, how are you getting your podcasts? Because if normally if you download, you know, you subscribe to a podcast in iTunes and you download it and it shows up in iTunes in the podcast section, that's all you need to worry about. That, are, that's correct. Like, in, like that's, in your case here, the, uh, uh, your show, I will, I will subscribe to that through iTunes and it will bring it down as a podcast. Okay. Hmm. So there's something going on a little funky funny because it shouldn't have, you shouldn't have to do anything special. Um, to that, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, it, I think if you go into iTunes, you can. Let me just look in in my iTunes, and I presume you're using iTunes 11. Yes, I am. Yeah, this introduced a lot, a lot of bugs. Uh, unfortunately, let me just uh, get info here 
on a, on a podcast. I believe there's a checkbox that says this here is a podcast, and that's all you have to do to have it pick up where you left off instead of uh, where at the beginning. So let me just, uh, you want to tag it as a podcast. Let me just see. I don't know if it's saying the genre is a podcast. I think there's a checkbox maybe in options. I'm just looking through. And, yeah. and uh, uh, Mia, Mia, there it is. It's in the options. So what you could do very quickly and easily is select all your podcasts. Just to make sure, select all your podcasts. Get info in iTunes. And under the options tab, there's a media kind. And you'll see that there are a number of choices, but music, podcast, iTunes U, audiobook, or voice memo. And the way the iPod handles the audio depends on how this is checked. If it's music, it'll start up at the beginning. If it's podcast or audiobook, it'll pick up where you left off. Imagine an audiobook. You know, you got a 20 hour audiobook and it starts at the beginning every time. That would be really a pain in the behind. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so that is in the info settings. Now, I would make sure you have uh, the latest firmware on your iPod and so forth because it's possible that, uh, you know, it's, it sounds like this should be correctly set. Check it. If it is, then the iPod isn't honoring it, and that's another matter. Well, it might be time to upgrade. <laughs> yeah, there's a checkbox, too, here that says remember playback position, and okay. that, that should be checked as well. It might be time to upgrade. I mean, certainly they've gotten better and better. I hate to buy, and you know, this. we live in such a uh, disposable economy. I hate to say, oh, yeah, you just get another one. But Apple really sets it up that way. You can't, for instance, change the battery. And after a few hundred charges, that thing's just not going to charge anymore. You have to. Sure. So they really, they've, they've created these, for obvious reasons, uh, as disposable items. And uh, I can just imagine all the iPods sitting in the landfill. So let's keep it as long as we can. Check that info and make sure you've got the remember playback position checked and that the media kind is podcast. And I think that that will do the right thing. Well, very good. Very good. Well, I appreciate it. And 7-3 from uh, Kilo Delta 6, Bravo, November Zulu. 7-3 from W6TWT. I appreciate it. Another ham. we got a lot of hams in the audience. I love that. <laughs> all right. Thanks. All right. Take care. Take care. Richard, Irvine, California, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Richard. Hi, good uh, good afternoon. I had a couple of quick questions. Sure. And my uh, first one is dealing with a super speed USB 3.0, a PCIe add-in card to, yeah. my, to my computer. So you want to add the capability. Newer computers have it, of course, uh, built in. That's a feature of the latest Intel chips. Right. Well, I'm trying to upgrade a little bit. Right. The computer's only about a year and a half old. Right. Not, not more than two, and you know when I when I'm searching, I can't figure out who who's got the best one. <laughs> they range in such uh, different prices. Oh, do they really? There's a big variation, huh? Yeah, and you know there's there's regular USB three, and then there's super speed three USB, and I. <laughs> Well, I would guess that it's, it, the, I mean, USB 3 is USB 3. It would probably have more to do with the slot. If it's in an express card slot, it's going to be faster than if it's just in a plain old PCI slot. And if you have an express card slot to spare, I would I would probably use the express card slot. Okay. Um, uh, any manufacturers? I bet you they're all the same, but let me, uh, uh, let me ask... Uh, you know, I, I asked several people, and, and uh, either either from the manufacturers like HP or or Dell, and I think they're probably all using the same <laughs> the same <laughs> components. So the the twenty dollars StarTech or you know similar is probably just as good. Um, uh, I'm just you know I you're right. There is a, quite a variation from twenty dollars yeah, to sixty dollars for roughly the same uh, stuff. Yeah, and there's Belkin and. So what Belkin does is what a lot of these companies do, which is they find a Chinese manufacturer and they relabel it, they rebrand it. That may very well be exactly the same as the no-name card uh, that you get from some other company. And then uh, I was talking to Dell Support, and they said, well, I'd, I'd get a SIG, a SIG card instead of a Belkin card. I, mean, I do like SIG, S-I-I-G. I think that's a good company, absolutely. Um, I don't have any experience with these third-party cards. Let me see if I can find out for you. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Uh, 
Ah, super speed and super power. You know it. All your uh, information, everything you need for your work day is spread out all over the place. I don't mean on your desk. No, we're digital now. Now. I'm having... Um, spread out all over your email. <laughs> your, Irish your wedding soup or something like that. cloud on the Google Docs or the... Uh, I, I mean, don't know that, what This it's is called. a real problem. Huh? That's why... Italian wedding soup. Italian wedding soup with meatballs. It's very good. It's what I had yesterday. It's very delicious. Very, very delicious. Yeah, I only buy um, USB uh, externals now. That makes such a difference in speed. So I would go with USB 3. I haven't tried US ESET for Android, so I don't know. I use Lookout, and it seems adequate. I don't know if you need anything more. Yes, my bobblehead's hair is parted on the wrong side. I used to part it on the left. I mean the right. Where Where is it? That's the left. I used to part it on the right. So, you know, he might be a flipped picture that he was using. Doesn't matter. I used to part it there. I've gone, I can go both ways. Um, just the ordinary antivirus. I don't like uh, the big security uh, bundles, to be honest. Yeah, scanners, card readers, uh, hard drives, certainly. SSD drives. I have, I put an SSD. Uh, I have an SSD enclosure from Otherworld Computing that's USB 3, and it's, it's almost as fast as the internal uh, SSD. It's really nice. I'll show you the uh, benchmarks when I come back from the little boy's room. So, Padre, I was thinking we could do live coverage of the uh, Papal Enclave, and maybe you could be our commentator and tell us what's going on. It'd be fun. We could do a marathon. So what was I going to show you? <laughs> what? Oh, no, no, no. I was going to show you the benchmarks. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, what was I going to do? Who am I? What am I doing here? Uh, let's see. Here is the other world computing. Huh. Elgato Thunderbolt SSD. And here, that's the Elgato Thunderbolt SSD. Elgato? I don't think that's right. And then we'll compare it to the uh, Otherworld Computing SSD. And then a USB 3. How about this? Hey, let's really get fancy. A USB 3 USB uh, thumb drive. How's about that? You're tuned to Premier Channel so, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. We'll begin these are the three benchmarks. From Premier <clears throat> this is the internal drive on my MacBook Pro Retina. 308 megabytes per second write, 500 megabytes per second read. This is the... Uh, HyperX USB 3 thumb drive, 100 read, 236 write. I'm rather, 100 write, 236 read. And this is a Thunderbolt SSD enclosure, 114 write and 212 read. So you can see the internal drive on the bus is obviously, you know, like almost three times faster. But, um, Still, USB 3 makes it very fast. This is a Blackmagic disk speed test that they make, and they, uh, they make this so that you can figure out what how high how quality video you could record in real time. Yeah, I wonder if... The, I'm going to have to redo that one, the Thunderbolt one. That seems wrong to me. 
Um, it's suspicious because it says Elgato. Oh, yeah. That was crappy. I didn't want to use that one. That was the Elgato, the first kind of dedicated Thunderbolt drive. It was terrible. This is so do I have... I may not have on here. I'll have to, I'll have to get it. I may not have the, um, the benchmark for the um, Thunderbolt external. You're right. So that was unfair. That was the first Thunderbolt um, external drive we got. Remember that one? It was crappy. That's what that was. I will, um, I'll do the benchmarks on the, um, so for, when I bought the uh, uh, Aura drive for my MacBook Pro Retina, the upgrade SSD from uh, Otherworld Computing, you know, you take your old SSD out and you put the new one in, and they gave me for free, because I bought it early, um, and I think they sell them now, a an enclosure that's the right kind of enclosure for that particular MacBook Retina SSD, and it's a USB, it's actually beautiful, I should bring it in. I think I reviewed it at some point. Anyway, it's very fast. No, you want to see the... Fu I do have a Fusion drive. So the thing about the Fusion drive is it changes all the time. As you use stuff, it gets faster. But you could see this is the uh, Fusion drive on the iMac, which is a combination of solid state and uh, spinning. And it's very good. It's 286, 383. I mean, it's, it's as good as an SSD. Let me... Um, Run it again. That I'll do the test in real time. You can see it get better. And I'll do a large size file because I think a bigger file is a better test. So what happens is it moves that file to the SSD as it sees you need it. So it actually gets faster, but it's very, this is very nice. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888, ask Leo. That's the phone number. We're talking computers, the internet. We're talking cell phones. We're talking home theater. We're talking digital photography, anything with a chip in it. 888-827-5536 is the number. 8888-ASK-LEO. Our website is techguylabs.com. That's where you'll find the show notes from today's show and every show prior. This is episode 960, so there's a few shows there. <laughs> All the Q&A and everything. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the number. We were talking about uh, USB 3, which I really love. In fact, during the break, I was, I was showing the uh, chat room uh, some of the benchmarks I've, I've got for uh, a USB 3 thumb drive the, um, from Kingston. I think they call it the uh, HyperX thumb drive. Very good speeds. Um, and a USB 3 external drive. It's a really nice interface. So certainly worth upgrading. Well, actually, I shouldn't say this. Now, if you're getting a new computer, look for USB 3. And any computer based on the Intel Ivy Bridge processors will have USB 3. The bigger question is, is it worth getting a USB 3 card and putting it in an older computer? I don't have any experience with that. I would guess so. I would guess so, but remember, you you know, to get the best advantage out of it, you're going to want to get uh, USB 3 external devices, scanners. Um, wouldn't matter with a printer, I don't think. Hard drives, thumb drives, that kind of thing. Uh, card readers should make a big difference. It's much faster, much faster, really fantastic. So, Richard, I don't know a brand name. I think Sig is fine. Sig is a kind of a cheap company too. I mean, I'm, I. I don't think SIG and Belkin probably are that different. And as I said, it might even be exactly the same hardware. It's kind of hard to tell, really. Uh, Luke in our chat room, Luke Stratton, says, I bought a cheap USB 3 uh, card off Amazon. He said, 25 bucks. It works just fine. And I think that's probably the case. The, I want to make sure you have the drivers for the operating system that you're using. If you're using Windows 8, that might make a difference. Paul in El Paso, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Paul. Hello, Paul. Hello, Paul. Are you there? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you now. Okay. Um, okay, I got a question. I think I might know the answer. Um, <clears throat> I've been uh, I'm here in a hotel room and I've got Wi-Fi on. Yeah. And it's really good speed, and I, you know I really want to use it. I know it's kind of uh, you know not as secure as my Verizon, but uh, I keep seeing things pop up in my Windows Media Player. It says uh, other people's names and other yeah. libraries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So here's the deal. When you're on a hotel, whether it's Wi-Fi or wired, you're on the hotel's network. And it's almost as if you had a bunch of friends over to your house and they all got on your network. You'd see all the shared stuff. So some of those people are running Windows. Windows Media Server is running. And you're seeing their shared libraries. If, if uh, you had a Mac and you had... Uh, uh, people were with, with iTunes running shared. You'd see those, too. This is normal because you're all on the same network. And, and of course, that's why it's a security risk is because you're all on the same network. So if you had a – you'd have to have a flaw in your system or turn on uh, unprotected file sharing, which nobody does. Uh, to But you could, for instance, if you're doing um, email and the email client you use doesn't encrypt the password – well, everybody else in the hotel can see your password if they use the right software. Yeah, that's a, uh, and I, you know, and I guess one comment I've always wanted to call you and make is uh, I have the Verizon uh, LTE, which is, I guess would be a lot more secure. It would be, yeah. But, but the problem with it is, is that they didn't tell me this when they had me switch over from my grandfather plan into the, uh, yeah, new, is that it uses about twice as much bandwidth per minute as as it did before so you know they would say oh well you only use like five or six uh megabytes you know per month or whatever and, and with the new one you know you're, you'll got you got 10 so that's going to be good uh but what's happened was is it's really really limited me and i'm i'm and i've called them you know uh, a whole bunch of times on it and you know and, and asked to get back on my grandfather they won't let me do it yeah and uh, and it, it it really uh you know, I, I, people don't realize it. I mean, I, I had no idea. And, and what happened when, when I first did it, uh, there wasn't a lot of LTE out there. And now that they've expanded it so much that I'm getting it almost everywhere I go now. I'm a long-haul driver. Right. And uh, it really burns it up. I mean, it's almost you, – you almost can't I don't, do I don't think that that's – I have never heard that – it uses more bandwidth. I think whatever you're doing is using more bandwidth. Well, what it is is like if you're using Skype, and and normally if it was on the three G, what? Happens oh, of course. Well, Skype. Okay, so anything adaptive that's Netflix and Skype, for instance, they'll see that you have more bandwidth and they'll use it. Well, yeah, and and, and it uses a lot faster. But I guess. Well, that's yeah, but that's adaptive. That's because they use adaptive bandwidth. Your email, for instance, isn't going to use more bandwidth. Well, no, I know your that. Your browsing but, won't use more bandwidth. But, but your yes, anything that uses adaptive bandwidth, and Netflix and Skype are perfect examples, anything that's kind of streaming like that, Netflix is going to go, oh, wow, I can give you high def. Well, well, Leo, I guess the question I keep asking them is, is that if it's going to use that much more bandwidth, what's the point of having it? Because the only reason why you would... The point of having it is you get better quality phone calls and better quality video. Yeah, so you you know, so I can have high definition Skype with my friends and right. my girlfriend and stuff, and 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 actually watch some videos where they don't interrupt and and right. cut off on you. That's the else. you just named it. That's the advantage. Well, it's the advantage, but what's you know, you you go from being able to use all you want to to where basically you got about five gigabytes a month, which is. If you're using it, that's that's not very much at all. Well, you, I mean, you of course you could turn off LTE and and just use three G. I mean, you're not. Uh, yeah, but I'm paying. Uh, you're paying for it, so it's actually a guy named Chris Conti sent me a, um, a list of how different carriers handle this, and it's not unusual for uh, when you upgrade to an LTE phone for your suddenly unlimited plan to be limited. You get bandwidth caps all of a sudden. Verizon, for instance, will not let you keep unlimited data unless you buy the phone full price. If you buy a subsidized phone, you know, you get to say, I'm going to upgrade to an LTE phone for the $200 price, you lose your unlimited data. You'll have to suddenly go with a different plan. AT&T does grandfather people in when you switch to 4G. Uh, however, I think that's a limited time only thing. I, I suspect, you know, AT&T's CEO has already whined. Giving people unlimited data is the worst thing I ever did. So I think it's only a matter of time before unlimited goes away. Sprint, because it's an also ran, does have unlimited data on all its plans. But <laughs> good luck getting high speed because the uh, LTE is very limited. And even here, where we're supposedly getting Sprint LTE, unless I'm standing under the tower, I don't. T-Mobile is doing something unusual. They were unlimited. Now they're throttled. Depending on the price point, you'll get 4G speeds 
up to a certain number of gigabytes, and then they'll downgrade you to 3G. You'll still get internet. You won't get a bigger bill, but you'll get lower quality. So what, what you're saying, you know, is I, I want my high speed, but I, uh, but I, uh, I don't want to be paying any more, or I don't want the bandwidth caps. And uh, unfortunately, you've made the switch. Now you can call them and you can, you know, you can complain and you can say, I'm gonna, you're going to lose me as a customer. And maybe their reten retention guys, every, every company has retention personnel. They'll say, I want to talk to a retention expert. And uh, that person will try to save you. M maybe, maybe not. Depends on how cocky they are. And so, <laughs> frankly, in, in, in some cases, they just go, yeah, okay, well, nice knowing you. See you later. So there's no guarantee. I've had, you know, I've I've mentioned, <laughs> I've mentioned this that if you say, but you have to be willing to quit. You you go to Comcast or you go to Verizon. And you say, you know, I've been a great customer. I've spent a lot of money with you. I have many accounts and I buy a lot of phones. And I really like you guys, but I just feel like this. Uh, you've moved me to uh, you know limited data, and I can't take it. And I I I'm gonna quit. And they say, okay, well, it's been nice knowing you. You you, <laughs> you hang up real quick, I guess. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Uh, my name is John Doe, and I want to quit. Will you try to keep me? Hey, let's face it. We're all trying to save money these days. We're all trying to find the best value for the buck. And when I think about value, man, the first thing that comes to mind, DSL Extreme, the best value in high-speed internet. Amazing. $14.95 a month. I've done something to screw up this Acer. Year. With DSL Extreme, everything's just as fast. There's no dialing in. There's no waiting on downloads. You can this, surf the, the bar from, from the bottom keeps coming up. Video, get driving directions and everything. I don't want that bar. I love DSL Extreme. That's who I use. And at fourteen ninety five a month, that's who you ought to be using. And by the way, they don't mm. sell you. There's no f no setup fees. The modems free. The spam protections free. Free twenty four seven support. You even get email maybe powered it's by just, Google. Maybe with it's virtually okay. unlimited storage and free online document spreadsheet presentations. Yeah, the coffee slowly For a soaking time, in. High speed internet, fourteen ninety five a month from my internet service provider. DSL. So far, Kiznet, I don't think so. Maybe I killed the keyboard. Six six two G E T N E T. Or visit but, but I'm saying, saying that's what I'm saying is my high speed Acer, which got some coffee on it, has been doing some some strange two, things. To get I should probably just leave it subscription. like this. Supply. Let the you coffee know, drip out. Every business email I get includes some kind of attack. I would be very unhappy if I broke this. PowerPoint presentation, contracts. I understand. I don't see anything. Information to be received. It seems to be operating all right. Hands, but we also need it to remain confidential. I might have been just hitting the spacks. Email's the wrong way to do it. I've been saying this for years. Don't send attachments. Use ShareFile. ShareFile. It's important to every kind of business. ShareFile from Citrix sends your attachments as secure links. I don't so know. It seems all right. With the highest degree of security, receive notifications when your files have been Seems okay, but see, I, I, this bar was coming up from the bottom for business. no reason. Plus, with ShareFile, you can access your files anywhere. Laptop. Tablet, smartphone. Should name these I groups. Love huh? share files. What do you do? You go like this, this yeah. The radio station. And then you need to sign up for my free trial now. No I don't credit know card what this required. Group is. Then you go you here. Millions of professionals name group. Every day. It started with my special what is it? free it's just trial. Extra. Go to sharefile.com. Click the microphone at the top of the page and enter and my it's name. Sharefile.com. Use my name, Leo. Like that. It's just whatever. It's random crap. <laughs> Download manager. What? Who installed it? Oh, download Navigator. That sounds suspicious. So I installed an Epson scanner, and I get all these extra little like every time. Oh, and this is the lights live essentials. I should make it that that its own group. Let's do this. I thought I said not to install that. Photo gallery, movie maker, buy ink. No, I don't think so. Unpin that sucker. Buy ink. Skype for desktop. No. Well, do I want... Now, see, this is an interesting question. So there's two Skypes. There's this Skype, which is Metro Skype, and there's Skype for desktop. Do I want an icon on the start screen for Skype for... De and then sometimes, like this Metro Twit, there's two. Now, I think that's the Metro version, and that's the desktop version, but they don't say... <laughs> Mm -hmm. Fax utility, I get rid of. Shared printer's monitor setting, get rid of. Don't know what the download navigator is. I don't know. See, now it's 
Hey, how are you? Hey, look at that. That's my first book. Back in, God, I don't know, 95 or something. I think I mentioned Windows 95 in it. <laughs> What's your name? Hi, nice to meet you, Earl. Where are you from? Oh, cool. You got to come here. Can, can you believe this place? Earl, you want me to... Well, actually, let me get off the... Because uh, uh, I'm coming back. But, but the next break, I'll autograph that if you'd like. Oh, you already you already got the autograph. Oh, but that's the old one. That's really old. Yeah. Where did you get that? At that at Tech TV. Oh, neat. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. I remember that. That was ages ago. That was like at some house or something. Oh my gosh, that was Henry when. Hen wow, he's 18 now. Oh man, too old. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy, 8888. Ask Leo. That's the number. If you want to talk high tech, we can do it with you. That's what we do here. Dave's in Tustin, California. Hi, Dave. Leo Laporte. Thanks for hanging on so long. Hi, Leo. Hey, I've got a, uh, about a two-and-a-half-year-old Samsung smartphone, mm -hmm. uh, but it's got in, it's got uh, Bluetooth yeah. in it. Yeah. The problem is I have a Volkswagen GTI with an iPod dock, <laughs> and I'd like to be able to play audio from the phone whether it's uh, streaming off the internet or, right. or just an audio file that I have downloaded. Uh, and I wondered if you could recommend a plug-in. Does, well, does your head-in have Bluetooth? Because that would be the easiest way to do it. No, not in this model car. Yeah. So that's the, to me, that's, in fact, even when I have a direct, you know, hardware connection, I often use Bluetooth. There's a, there are different Bluetooth, Bluetooth profiles. There's the headset profile, which is low quality. And then there's a stereo profile a2dp that's high quality and that's that's good audio and there and it's wireless so you get in the car you turn on the the car and and it just starts playing which is wonderful um now you've got an ipod 30 pin connector i don't think what is the uh is there a usb connection on the uh, old samsung uh yes i have a usb so one possibility to be doing it via usb there are i've tried and i don't find them work very well uh, connectors that can convert the 30-pin connector to USB. They're not expensive. You could try it. Belkin makes one. Um, people would also have to have uh, a connection to, well, usually when I'm driving in the car and I'm using the GPS, I have uh, a USB, you know, a total adapter to USB to keep the phone charged. Right. So you're already connected. Is it connect to the head, head end, though? Because that's what you, you need to connect to the head end to um, get the audio. You know what I'm talking about? Your stereo, your car, in-car stereo. Do you have, do you have auxiliary in? How about that? He hung up on me. <laughs> Were these questions too difficult? So <laughs> here's, and I, I have to say, I've not had great results with these. This is one thing I've tried. This is the Belkin uh, Bluetooth um, hands-free kit. That basically you plug this into the aux adapter and it gives you uh, a Bluetooth pairing mode. Um, I wonder, maybe the chat room can help me on this one. Is there an adapter that will adapt to the iPod's 30 pin and then convert it? I bet there is to USB. Then you could just connect the uh, the Samsung directly to the 30 pin connector. Yeah, that would be another another way to do it. What you wouldn't have is the control. See, the 30-pin connector for the iPod, like the lightning connector, gives you control of the iPod. So I don't know what happens when you dock an iPod on your car stereo, but my suspicion is you, you'll get a display that lets you control the iPod from the stereo. You wouldn't get that capability. You'd have to still hold the Samsung phone and say, okay, play my Pandora or whatever. But you would get the audio out of the phone into the stereo, and I think that's what you want. Uh, other ways to do this, FM transmitters, I don't like those. Uh, if you live in an area where there's a lot of radio stations, they really don't work very well. If you live in the country, not so bad. Uh, you just attach that uh, to the uh, car, to the phone, and then tune the radio in the car to a, a free frequency. Uh, cassette adapters work. If you have a cassette player in your car, this actually works surprisingly well. I've been doing this since 1991 pre-Bluetooth, uh, you put the cassette ad adapter, Radio Shack sells them, a lot of companies sell them, into the cassette player. It thinks it's a cassette, and then it has a little uh, 
audio jack coming out of it. You plug into the audio jack of anything, including your phone, and uh, and it works very well. Again, no control. You have to control it from the phone, but uh, the audio sounds quite good. And the chat room has given me a number of 30-pin to USB connectors from a variety of sources. Never tried them. Don't know how well they work. But uh, that's that would be another way to do it. So you connect the 30-pin connector to your dock on your on your car. Now, oh, see, these are the wrong kind of USB, unfortunately. We've got to find one that is, uh, is the right kind of USB, a micro USB, I presume. Anyway, some choices out there. Best choice, probably, if you had a cassette player, that'd be the easiest. Pop the cassette in there. Stan in uh, Rialto, California. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hello, Leo. Hi, Stan. Hey, listen, Leo, I have a uh, HP printer, mm -hmm. uh, all-in-one D110. Yep. And I have a Samsung Galaxy 3 uh, smartphone. Okay. And uh, You want to print from the phone to the printer? Yes, it prints, but when I go to my phone gallery and choose a photo I want to print, I go to cloud print. I don't use the. Uh, so you're the, uh, using Google uh, Google's cloud print. That's a good solution, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but it comes out in black and white. It won't oh. come out in color. <laughs> that I don't know. That's an interesting problem because you want the color. Now the printer is a color printer, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's a yeah, dumb question, but. The cartridge, <laughs> you're sure. um, that's a good question. For some reason, the printer is thinking you're sending it a black and white image. You want to get a color image. Uh, boy, that's, I don't know why I would be doing that. Um, and I don't know what end you'd want to mess with. The, he's using Google Cloud Print, which is a very interesting solution. Works with all Android devices. Uh, Chrome OS, Chrome even does it. Where uh, you print, what you're doing is you're sending the job to Google. You've, you have to register your printer with Google to make this work. Um, and then Google sends the print job to your home printer, your HP printer itself. Um, when you first set it up, it, it does a print test. Make sure your printer is not defaulting to black and white. Um, I would guess it's a printer setting. I don't think the, the cloud print cares. It's just getting a file from your phone and sending it to the printer. I would guess, I would look at your printing settings. Make sure your printer is uh, not defaulting to black and white. I'm looking at the chat room to see if they have any uh, suggestions. Um, just don't know. Peter says, turn off the grayscale option. There, there may be some options in there. Cloud print, uh, oh, wait a minute. Now, Web8880 is telling me it's a, it's a bug, a known bug in uh, cloud print. Or with Chrome, maybe. Chrome prints in black and white even when color is selected. Yeah. Now you have to do this from Chrome. I don't I think you're not using Chrome. You said it's an Android phone, but that does sound like maybe there's a bug in cloud print. You want to make sure um, that in you open your print preview if you're using Chrome. And uh, select the cloud print dialog, and in the uh, preview settings, make sure you select color under the printer. Color may be an advanced option. Eh, maybe that's it. Hey, we're just, you know, this we're still working this stuff out. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Chrome means color, right? <laughs> uh, it says it's a bug. It's a chromium bug, actually. All right, yeah, I, I, yeah, that's great. Yeah, my mom's still in Cranston, just up the road a piece. Yeah, trying to get her to move out here. She's eighty. It's time to. <laughs> that's right about when I moved there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I like it here. California's uh, God's country. I gotta say. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. What do you do? Oh, you're an actor. Oh, that's neat. Are you in SEG? Yeah, I'm SEG actor. Oh, that's great. 
Oh, that's great. How fun. What movies have you worked on? Uh huh. I loved What Dreams May Come. Boy, that was a beautiful movie. Oh, I bet. Yeah, a lot. I'm trying to think. Yeah, a lot of crowd scenes in that. Were you in Were you in heaven or? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're one of them. Oh, that's so fun. So that was heaven, right? Yeah. Have fun. You were in the Matrix. You were a driver. Wow, that's pretty cool. Right. Oh, that's fun. How fun. So I'm bouncing around and it's not it's probably not a, a living, but it'd be a fun thing to do. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I get all my stuff from retirement military Yeah. Oh, that's cool. You got some time, it's fun to go. Sure. Yeah. And then where you work a lot with voices and everything else and all that. So I don't know, we had Porky Pig in here the other day. <laughs> That was pretty funny. The official voice of Porky the Pig. Yeah. He he recorded. Oh, Ozzy's here. Oh, oh, Lisa's here. Let me go say hi. No, Mustang. Oh, Mustang. Yeah, because Ford's a sponsor. I can't drive it. She'd like a Corvette. Yeah, you drive a Corvette? What year? Lisa, Lisa could go for a ride with you if you asked her. <laughs> she actually loves Camaros. Do you like Corvettes better than Camaros? Yeah, yeah, she likes Corvettes That's better. That's what I got. Silver. <laughs> Silver. Wow. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's my phone number. A little bit more time on the show before uh, we wrap it up for the weekend. Let's go to Maui. Let's all go to Maui. Yeah. Robert's there. Hey, Robert. Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> Is the sun shining in Maui today? It's, uh, it's, uh, we got some rain, um, but beautiful breeze, uh, sunspots, a lot of rainbows. It's, uh, it's beautiful. How nice. I'm jealous. You live in paradise. Well, what can I do for you? You know what? I'm a longtime listener. Thank you. And uh, when I bought my new Mercedes uh, Sprinter van, they gave me a free iPad with it. Wow. And uh, I have never seen you. And then, uh, you know, I got on the iPad and started going to your, your past episodes. And uh, I was like, wow, I had you pictured between like a Dr. Drew and a Ben Stein. You know, I was like, you <laughs> never see anybody for years and Isn't years. Isn't it funny when you, you attach a voice and you imagine what that person looks like and they never yeah. look like their voice ever? It's amazing. Um so, yeah, I, I actually love um, the off-air Yeah, that's kind of the fun of it. We do. Uh, we just keep streaming. We never we never turn off the cameras or turn off the audio. You can, uh, if you uh, have an iPad, there's a Twit application from Shift Key Software that's an easy way to watch either live or after the fact. You can download on demand of this show and uh, 25 other shows. We do a bunch of shows. Oh, I love them, you know, especially because I, I listen to you on the weekends. I'm a plumber. So, you know, I, I hate to get out of the van, you know, when you, when you say you're going to bring something up next and I got to go do a job and I'm like, oh, wow. Yay. <laughs> like that. We keep, we keep you listening. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for the kind words, Robert. I appreciate it. No problem. Um, I, I have a uh, problem. Yes. Um, I had two 300 gig Raptors uh, from Western Digital. Yeah, those are nice drives. I used to buy only Raptors. Yeah. That's all. I only buy Western Digital. Yeah, and they're 10,000 RPM. They're very fast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pricey. Um, and uh, my motherboard, I had them in RAID. And I was listening to your show like a couple of weeks ago where you said uh, uh, RAID was um, affordable. Well, not if you're using Raptors. <laughs> redundant, array of, redundant array of inexpensive discs. Yeah, mine are very expensive. <laughs> yeah, you bought you bought fancy discs. Now, uh, were you using RAID zero or RAID one? RAID zero. Okay, and that's what I we had, call that. Um, we call that scary RAID. Yeah, I love scary RAID because uh, if either of the drives has a problem, you've lost everything. Well, okay, I uh, my motherboard took a dump. Yeah, uh, I only play games. Okay. And uh, my motherboard took a dump. Yeah. I was able to get all the information off uh, the two 300 gigs 
Oh, wow. And put it on one 240 um, Intel SSD. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's faster oh, no. than dual Raptors. Yeah, yeah. Now I bought two um, 520 480 gigs Intels that I'm putting back in RAID 0 yeah. with four Raptor terabytes. So clearly, you're willing to... Obviously, plumbing business is good in Maui. You're willing to spend anything it takes to get your games as fast as possible. Hey, you know what? If you answer the phone, you're golden. <laughs> Everybody's out serving it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. They're like, oh, you answered the phone. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah, I mean, it'd be hard to be a plumber in uh, in paradise. Oh, I love it. Yeah, you just want to you just want to go to the beach every day. But I tried to um I tried to use the Intel um uh software that you know will will bring it over right you know to the new but it doesn't recognize raid but well, shouldn't even care if it's raid because if the raid is on it should look like a single disc that's yeah but the intel software oh um, it may be so low level maybe it's maybe it's doing a low level sector copy it probably is i don't know it should you know it, it, the raid is something that goes on in the bios uh when you when you when you set it up and uh, you should be able to run that Intel software, and it should it should just it, unless it's not using BIOS for some reason, uh, it should just say, "Oh yeah, there's a single drive here. Let me do the copy." Okay, so if that's not working, don't use the Intel stuff. Uh, the Intel stuff is a, a low level, uh, I presume, low level sector copier, so you can get the old stuff onto the new system. You probably can just do a simple copy. Um, it just doesn't. It, I'm not sure it makes any sense that the Intel stuff, uh, the Intel software, wouldn't recognize the drives. I don't understand why it wouldn't. Is is, is it a separate RAID controller or is it on the motherboard? Uh, it is a set. Well, there there's one on the motherboard, and then you have to uh, when you start up Windows, you have to configure that to RAID two. And I got it, I got it on a 64 stripe, and um, everything went fine. But then uh, when Windows was done, you know, had it all set up, um, I brought the other, the, the, uh, the 240 SSD, and I tried to hook it up, and, you know, um, and it wouldn't recognize the 240 SSD, huh. and it wouldn't recognize the two 480s in RAID. You know, I, I had nothing. Robert, so I, I don't know. It's one of those things I just cannot answer from this distance. You're going to have to fly me to Maui. I'm gonna, you have to put me up for a week because this could take a long time, uh, and uh, and I will I will help you. <laughs> I, it's too complicated for me to to figure out what's what's gone wrong there. It, that should all work. What you're doing should work. But you know, there's one little thing here or there that could just could be getting in your way. I don't. I just can't help you from this distance. Like I said, I'll come to Maui. Jr. Rancho Cucamonga, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Jr. Hey, Leo. How are you doing today? I'm great. How you doing? I'm doing great. Love the show. Always Thank you. a uh, uh, faithful listener to you every weekend. I appreciate it. Thank you. What can I, I do for you? Uh, I got a question for you. I have a little bit of a dilemma. I'm I'm trying to do some video streaming okay. from an area that really has a very weak uh, signal for 4G, and we've been using the live stream broadcaster, which is a great little component when when you're in a strong signal area. Yeah. But in the area that we are at, because we're trying to broadcast some motorsports events. Uh, it, we just can't pick up a really strong signal. So my, question, my question to you is, is, is there anything that, I, I know I've seen online amplifiers and antennas for 4G signals, but I don't know. If yeah, it ain't going to help you. Okay. So, so the live stream is a very cool idea. Uh, we've used similar products ourselves. Um, uh, the idea is you, you know, you're going to stream from somewhere where you don't have normally have internet connectivity. These right. things you put... Uh, 3G or 4G card into and it will do the encoding it will turn it into video and you can actually just attach it to the right to the camera and send it out um, but all of this presumes high speed 4G correct and uh, is, does this live stream it's a single card probably right not multiple cards yeah yeah, yeah. it's just it's just single, and we've been utilizing the Verizon. There's a Verizon wireless yeah. uh, modem, the uh, UML 290. We, uh, yeah, this is, uh, oh, so it's not internal. It's an external 
Uh, you just yeah. it does Wi-Fi. Is that what it's using to connect yeah, to the card? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Essentially, it, it tries to re the the component the, the broadcaster tries to latch on to a local 4G signal. Got it. And there takes it to live stream right. a website where we you know want to. A stream, stream the signal. But, we uh, used like, to use. We remember. You may remember me when I was uh, body surfing a couple of years ago at, at uh, South by Southwest. I had a big old backpack on, and that had that device had eight slots for eight different three G and four G cards. The idea that you wouldn't any one may not be enough, but it would bond them together. Um, obviously, not obviously very effective, cost effective. We'll talk some more right after this. No, I didn't ruin my auto book. It's okay. I thought I might have, but it's fine. The internet is an absolute necessity for our everyday life. But we all know there's a lot of dangerous stuff. Uh, you're kind of out of luck if you can't. Uh, what do we use? What was that? What was that that we used to use? I can't even remember the name of it now. Live View. Was it? Live View. L I V U. Right. That's right. It's not the same as the live stream. Heuristics engine. That means it proactively detects all kinds of internet threats as they happen before they do. Live stream doesn't have any um, direct connection itself. It just uses whatever you've got. So it's really just an encoding box. PC Magazine just gave it the most consumer recommended award in the security category. Try the latest and greatest version 6 free for 30 I don't know what you can do if you don't have bandwidth, you don't have bandwidth. Nothing you can do. Yeah, Burke says record it and send it later. Leaving just to go to the post office, man, that can slow you down. That's why you need stamps.com. With stamps.com, you can buy and pay. No, I didn't do it. I should have done. We could have had a whole day talking about getting rid of daylight savings time. We're actually keeping it and getting rid of the getting rid of standard time. There's a petition online. At the whitehouse.gov. Eliminate biannual time change. We use stamps.com. Anybody who does a lot of mailing really ought to use stamps.com. You always have the right postage. And there's no need for an expensive postage unit or special aid. Your computer, your printer. Right now, use my name, Leo, for a special offer, a no-risk trial, a $110 bonus offer. <sighs> Don't go to whitehouse.com. Petitions on whitehouse.gov. Thank you. Stamps.com. Use my name, Leo, and never go to the post office again. Hmm. Holy moly. Some of these petitions. There are a lot of nuts uh, in the world, aren't there? Where is the time one? You know what's really wrong with this system? <laughs> this is what's wrong with democracy. <laughs> Why we have a representative democracy? <laughs> Remove barriers that protect advanced practice registered nurses who are practicing to their full scope. Keep knives off the plane. Respond to Rand Paul on drone strikes. Oh, my God. Good luck finding a... Uh, end... Yes, I'm going to sign a petition to end corruption in Congress. Yes, I agree. <laughs> let's end... Let's end that. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yes, that's why I'm glad to live in a republic. Oh, thanks for the link. Stop scrolling! Stop it! There we go. Oh, 84,000 uh, signatures needed. Total 15,000. Eliminate the biannual time change. I should have started the show with this. Yeah, I know it. I don't know who in the world ever got it ever. Last live read, Carbonite. Did it good. 
For years and years folks got along with an old grandfather's clock. Or just a common old sundial sitting out on a rock. Actually, uh, it was Ben Franklin that come, came up with this daylight savings time stuff. Leo Laporte, that was <laughs> the good old day. <laughs> it's been a while. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I hope you did set the clock ahead, spring forward, right? So you know that uh, you know that you, this show is almost over, right? All right, just I want to make sure. Um, so we're talking to Jr. Jr. does a uh, does a racing podcast. What's the name of that, Jr.? Uh, it's known as Kart Racer TV. If you go to my Facebook page, Kart Racer TV, where we're trying to do kart racing of Kel Speed uh, karting in Fontana. Yeah, we've talked before, of course. Yes. It's on YouTube and uh, Facebook, and now the issue is you want to stream live, and right. if you don't have bandwidth, it's pretty hard to do that, and obviously some of these kart races are places where you just don't have 4G, and poor yeah. 4G is not going to do it. Uh, we've had the same problem. You know, We've tried to stream live from a variety of venues, including places where there's a lot of other people using the 4g and it's just hit and miss sometimes it's great sometimes it's not this is the early days you know if uh, broadcast television they'll buy a very expensive satellite uplink and you know all sorts of stuff uh that's how they do it we're trying to do it on the cheap because we're podcasters exactly yeah uh, we used the live view and that had multiple cards that's that helped but it was still not a perfect solution uh, oh. A single card is never going to be a perfect solution because it's just, you know, it's inconsistent. And frankly, streaming high-quality live video takes some bandwidth. It's not a simple thing to do. Right, right. I'm sure that you can mess with that device to use less bandwidth, the lower the quality of the signal or lower the frame rate, that kind of thing. But they're, they're, We have done that. We, we've played with the, with the bandwidth uh, as far as lowering it and also the quality of the signal that we're sending to it right. from the camera. And it still doesn't seem to give us a good solution at yeah. all. Yeah, well, you got to have – there's a minimum – you got to have a minimum of consistent bandwidth to make it work. I just think you're going to have to record it and not do it live. When you can't do it live, you can't do it live. Unless you can borrow Wi-Fi from the track, or even better yet, Ethernet from the track, then then you'd be good. Okay, so uh, so none of those amplifiers really work at all? No, because uh, the amplifiers work uh, from a near to, you know, if like 10 feet away you can get a signal, but here you can't. Mm. They're not going to help you for a long distance. Yeah. Okay. Now you're stuck right. with it, unfortunately. <sighs> but think about what you're trying to do. I mean, really, <laughs> it's amazing we can do it at all. <laughs> Whenever, you know, I go, golly, we should be able to do this. But really, think about it. That's a, that's a challenge. You're sending live, high-quality video uh, over the Internet. We were talking uh, before the break, and that's why we played that grandpa song about uh, the time change. I hope you did note the time change. There is a petition at the whitehouse.gov, and there's even, it's kind of a movement uh, afoot to eliminate the uh, time change. We petition the Obama administration to eliminate the biannual time change caused by daylight savings time. It's an archaic practice in our modern society. You know, the reason they did it is so that the farmers would have more daylight. And the most cited reason today, energy savings, has never been shown to be true, according to this petition. Some industries still like daylight savings time, like sporting equipment retailers, but there are many more who dislike the changed hours, like television, <laughs> and those of us who lose an hour of sleep in the spring. Uh, what do you think? They've only got 15,000 petition uh, signatures. Uh, if they get 100,000 in the next month, then the White House has to respond. Now, I can tell you the truth because I've talked to the uh, some of the data people at the, at the Obama campaign and later in the White House, and they said, you know, the only really reason we do this is we collect your email addresses so we can send you emails. <laughs> John says, it's not savings, it's saving. Daylight saving. They even got it wrong in the petition, John. Should we just ignore it because they said savings? <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, John, my studio uh, manager, is this is a hot button topic for John. So I will, I, I apologize. I will say daylight saving time. There's no savings. It's saving. <laughs> Earl agrees. Yeah. Well, you were in the armed forces. You, you, you're, you're a precise person. You have to be precise. Everything is in its place. 
He's a Virgo, too. Well, that's the worst. <laughs> I mean the best. Uh, let's see. Few more, I think a few more minutes left. Uh, Hugh in Los Angeles has been hanging on for a while. Hi, Hugh. One love, man. Where are say? Ah, oh, yes, man. Are you from Jamaica? <laughs> are you from the islands? Yeah, or do you just yeah, drive man, a Volkswagen Beetle? Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I and I like that. What can I do for you? <laughs> I and I like that too much. <laughs> hey, may I, watch you? I have been watching your show a long time, you know. Okay. Yeah, I have been watching your show a long time, and, and I, I, I don't buy anything at all if it if I don't check with you first. I go Hugh, I like that. That's I, what I want to yeah. hear. What do you want to yeah, buy? What can I tell your... you to buy? Huh? What can I tell you to buy? <laughs> <laughs> N nothing right now. You okay. know, I always go to your show notes, or Thank I you. go to buy, buy bef um, before you buy. Yes, we have a show, a product review show called Before You Buy every week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Hugh. I, I, I also had um, ESET because of you. Well, Hugh, I, like I love you. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Are you are you are you really are you really from the islands? Uh, yeah, I'm from Jamaica, man. I, I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Hey, I, I I love how you I love how you imitate the Jamaicans, man. <laughs> Not so well, but I'm working on it. <laughs> you sound perfect. <laughs> What do you think of that Volkswagen commercial? What do you think of that Volkswagen commercial they showed in the Super Bowl, where everybody just got so relaxed they they all became Jamaicans in the Volkswagen? Did you like that, or was that insulting? Um, you're gonna have to send me something with that because I I never seen it. Oh, you haven't seen it? Oh, yeah. It's no, I haven't seen it. Well, you know, we got about two minutes left, Hugh. I want to make sure I get get a answer yeah, to your question. Look, so get a I red will, get a red striped beer, you. sit down, relax, let's talk. All right, I was. <laughs> I was listening to you last week, and I heard you said that, you know, you're saving up for something. I think it's an escalator. <laughs> yes, an, an escalator right. to nowhere. <laughs> yes. That's on a game, Hugh. That's not real. <laughs> That's not real? No. <laughs> anyway, man, if you were saving up for an escalator, man, you wouldn't have to save up for it because, man, I could, I, I could, I could tell you something where you could have that in a month. I could be, I could. In one month. <laughs> Oh yes. Oh, yes. I'm, what, I'm, what I'm talking about, Hugh, is a is a game that unfortunately has really addicted me and addled my mind. Called uh, The Simpsons Tapped Out. It's a uh, it's an iOS game that I can't stop playing, and and, and, and it's one of the you know these things are uh, not a good thing if you ask me, because okay. you get you start playing them and you can't stop playing them. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. So no, I don't need an I don't need an escalator, Hugh. But thank you for calling. I appreciate it. It's great to talk to you. What a nice way to end the show. These are these social games. You start with Farmville, right? And you play these, and there's they're not really fun, but you just somehow you got to keep doing it. Got to keep doing it. And uh, and the and of course they're free games, except that if you really want to get a nice little village going, the plot of this is that Homer Simpson was playing with his MyPad playing a game and, and wasn't paying attention to the, the nuclear plant. It blew up, destroyed Springfield. He has to rebuild it. So you start with nothing, and you slowly add buildings and people, and they're all the Simpsons characters. See, that's part of the reason I like it, because they all that's fun. But then uh, if you really want a nice-looking Springfield, you can't, you can't just you know play the game. you got to buy donuts with real American money. And that's how they get you. Same thing with Farmville, right? They get you because, you know, you want, well, I would, boy, I'd really like that Lard Lad Donut store. Well, that's 100 donuts, please. <laughs> Before you know it, it's the most expensive game you've ever played. No, don't ask me how much I've spent. I'm embarrassed to admit it. So don't start. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this week. It's been a lot of fun, and I'm glad to talk to you, Hugh. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll be back next week talking high tech. Meanwhile, all week long, twit.tv, the podcast network, and our website, techguylabs.com. Have a great geek week. I'll see you next time. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy show for today. I'm Leo Laporte. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, the Tech Guy is just the tip of the iceberg. We do nearly 30 shows now on the Twit Netcast Network, and you'll find them all at twit.tv. We talk about Windows and Windows Weekly, Macintosh and MacBreak Weekly, iPad on iPad Today. You get your daily dose of tech news from Tech News Today and our weekly roundtable show, This Week in Tech. It's all at twit.tv. 
And I'll be back next time with another great Tech Guy podcast. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.